Win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. from being gone with the wind. So far, no victories, too many mistakes, and one big question. How do you beat the Yankees? Tom Glavin could be the answer. His credentials and calm demeanor are what the Braves are counting on tonight. For the past decade, no left-hander has won more games. His one hitter in game six of the 95 series was his crowning achievement, one of the greatest World Series pitching performances of his generation. Tonight, he's been asked to do it again, to do what begins to look more and more difficult. Beat the Yankees. Come into the house that Ruth built during the World Series and defeat Joe Torre's talented and resourceful team. The odds are stacked in New York's favor. The Yankees' stellar performances have the Braves facing a quick exit from the Fall Classic. For two games, New York has done what defending world champions do. Right now, they'd probably win a vote to determine the best team of the decade. But Tom Glavin and the Braves haven't cast their ballots yet. They're waiting for game three, next. This is the E-Trade World Series pregame show. Tonight, it's Game 3, the Atlanta Braves versus the New York Yankees. We catch a break on the weather tonight, a very pleasant 56 degrees at Yankee Stadium. New York throws Andy Pettit against the Braves' Tom Glavin. Each was 14-11, and 11, but those stats are a bit misleading. Each pitched well down the stretch. Each has two strong postseason outings under his belt. Each beat tonight's opponent during interleague play in July. Hi and welcome to Game 3, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. Joe Morgan will join me in a few minutes for the call. Now, the position in which the Braves find themselves, we can't kid you, is not good. But neither is it insurmountable. Eleven times in World Series history, a team down 0-2 has come back to win. And the Braves know this from painful experience because they were in the same position the Yankees find themselves in now, winning the first two games on the road against the Yanks in 1996, coming home for three, heavily favored, and somehow the Yankees won four in a row. It can be done, but for it to happen, Tom Glavin has to be Tom Glavin tonight. Back with a call in a bit. Right now, here's Hannah Storm with the pregame show. Hannah. Thanks, Bob, and it is a beautiful night for baseball. It might be fitting that the Braves will attempt to restart the series with the pitcher who was scheduled for game one. A stomach virus sidelined Tom Glavin for the opener, and he says he lost seven pounds. A short time ago, Craig Sager asked for an update on Glavin's condition from Braves manager Bobby Cox. After being scratched from game one due to the flu, Bobby Cox sends Tom Glavin to the mound in Yankee Stadium tonight in game three. And Bobby, after the flu, what do you expect out of Tom Glavin tonight? Well, hopefully uh, he can go seven strong ones, and if he can go after that, that's fine too. But right now, that's probably what we'd expect. But he does feel fine, and he should be close to 100% when he goes out there. Even if you get a good game from Tom Glavin, it doesn't mean a win. The way the bat batting order has been going, hitting less than 200. What do you have to do? Who do you have to count on tonight to get runs from? Well, you never know in these things, and uh, it could be... The weakest hitter in your lineup could be the star of the game when it comes to the World Series. Mark Lemke did that one year here in 96, I think, and um, you never know. I'm just hoping we all get hot at one time, and we can do that very easily. We have hit, and we'll hit again, so it could come from anywhere in that lineup. But what concerns you most, the leadoff man or the cleanup man? No, it, uh, there's no one thing that concerns you. Uh, you know, we just need to get a couple runs. We need to hit some gaps in this ballpark, certainly with Andy Pettit pitching with his pickoff move. It's very difficult to hit and run or steal bases off him. He, he leads the league every year in uh, caught stealing, and it's very difficult to do. But yet, you know, we may try something there, but we need to hit the ball tonight. All right, thanks a lot. Let's go back to Hannah. Thanks, Craig. Well, Tom Glavin told me during batting practice today that for the first time in four days, he ate solid food, a pregame meal of ravioli. Glavin has been with the Braves since 1988 when Atlanta lost 106 games. 
He went on to pitch the deciding sixth game in the Braves 1995 World Series championship. It remains the only series the Braves have won in their four tries this decade. Now, once again, Atlanta is facing postseason disappointment. We'll just have to see if the Braves are able to pick themselves up and bounce back. I think one ball game can turn this whole series around, but that ball game has to be Tuesday night in New York. So a lot of pressure will be put on Tom Glavin. Coming from where I was with this organization in the late 80s where you lose 100 games a year, uh, I like being a part of this situation. We realized how difficult it is to get here and for us there's more of a sense of urgency because you start to wonder about the law of averages and you don't get this opportunity typically as many times as this ball club has had uh, and I think that it's at the point where you, you kind of starting to wonder how many more chances we're going to get and we want to try and take advantage of some before they're gone. Tonight, Glavin faces a relentless Yankee lineup that is getting production throughout the order. Among the toughest outs, shortstop Derek Jeter, who has four hits and three runs scored in the first two games. The Yankees have yet to hit a home run, but still have scored 11 runs, with 17 of their 20 hits singles. Cincinnati Reds all-star shortstop Barry Larkin went into the batting cage to explain just what makes the Yankees so tough. You've heard these Yankees referred to as professional hitters. Well, let me tell you what that means. Early in the count, you'll see these guys looking for a particular pitch in a particular zone where they can drive it. And Lede drives one to left center field. But what makes them special is the fact that late in the count, they'll cut down on their swing and basically take what the pitcher gives them. They don't mind working the count, they never give up in that bat, and they don't mind hitting with two strikes. Struck him out. Tonight, these professional hitters meet the professional pitcher. Tom Glavin is not going to give in to these Yankees. He's going to work both sides of the plate and make these guys hit his pitch. It'll be interesting to see who wins this battle of professionals. You can talk baseball with Barry Larkin online throughout Game 3 at msnbcsports.com. As the baseball trading deadline approached, the Yankees almost dealt away tonight's starting pitcher, Andy Pettit. He had struggled for the first half of the season and heard it from the tough Bronx crowd. He couldn't even escape his wife's comments in his own home. Kind of deal, two, two. I think she was talking about maybe that um, I didn't have quite the fire that I used to have. And, you know, once you get beat up on for a couple of months and every time you take the mound that you're struggling and stuff, yeah, I guess I kind of lost a little bit of the fire. So. It's kind of a joke now around the house that she doesn't tell me good luck anymore. She tells me to go out there and uh, get my eyes right. So <laughs> she thinks I'll have a good start as long as I have the focus. Well, Pettit turned it around. He went 7-3 and three after the trade deadline and pitched brilliantly in the Yankees' critical Game 4 win in the American League Championship Series. Tonight, the Braves' Chipper Jones will face Pettit in dealing with the tragic news that two of his agents, Robert Fraley and Van Arden, were on the doomed flight that also killed U.S. Open champion Payne Stewart. Dan Hicks remembers the life of one of golf's great champions. He was a man of style, classic, elegant, with a golf swing to match long, fluid, and effortless, envied and admired by his competitors. Payne Stewart thrived in golf's most pressure-filled arenas, those championships played for honor and country. A winner of three major titles, including two U.S. Opens. His defining moment his clutch, heroic putt on the final hole to win this year's Open at Pinehurst. Payne Stewart is the 1999 U.S. Open champion. Oh, my! To Stewart, there was nothing more meaningful than winning America's championship. When the flag goes up and they play the national anthem, I get a tear in my eye. And I, it's an emotional experience for me. I'm an emotional person, uh, as displayed at the, the U.S. Open. I, I don't wear my m emotions inside. I let them out. And I, whether that's right or wrong, that's just pain, Stewart. 
He found another outlet for that patriotism in the Ryder Cup as a passionate competitor, a loyal teammate, and a natural-born leader. At the 99 Ryder Cup, his final act, one of sportsmanship, conceding the final putt and his singles match with a handshake and a simple embrace. At 42, more mature, the fiery Stewart had found an inner peace and renewed spiritual faith. God's been good to me. I've got a beautiful wife, two lovely kids, you know, and I get to play golf for a living. I, I've got no regrets. The PGA Tour is rearranging play at the Tour Championship to allow players to attend Friday's memorial service for Payne Stewart. We'll be back at Yankee Stadium for Game 3 of the World Series after this. This has been the E-Trade World Series pregame show. Eeny, meeny, miny, <laughs> this Christmas, everything, yes, everything, is getting blown up. From Trilon Studios comes the $200 million event of the year. Blow up. Oh, my. This movie's gonna blow. A Michael Harbour film, a Trilon Studios production. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. Remember compliments you receive. Forget the insults. Be nice to your siblings. They're your best link to your past and the people most likely to stick with you in the future. Everybody's free. Finally, a minivan to live by. Introducing the all-new Mazda MPV. What do Brazilian chocolates, Filipino soft drinks, German motor cars, and the South China Morning Post have in common? You got to have this, 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 and this. They're all made in factories that use Siemens industrial systems. Before you eat, or you drink, or you write, or you read, there is this, 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 and this. All over the world, we make a lot of things that make a lot of things. So for this, 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 or this, or this. We're Siemens. We can do that. November 6th, Belmont Stakes winner Lemon Drop Kid takes on America's number one ranked thoroughbred, Barons, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Just one of eight championship races on racing's richest day. Live from famed Gulfstream Park, the 16th running of the Breeders' Cup, November 6th on NBC. I could see you. Oh no, oh no. I got it. 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 Freaks and Geeks. I said I got it. Time Magazine calls it sweet and funny. The best new show. Show off. NBC Saturdays after baseball. I said I got it. The 1999 World Series. Tonight, it's Game 3. The Atlanta Braves versus the New York Yankees. Back at Yankee Stadium, and we're joined now by Hall of Famer Joe Morgan. Joe, as we were mentioning earlier, if the Braves are going to get back in this World Series, they need a good performance from Tom Glavin. But even if they get it, those bats have to come alive, too. Well, Bob, both teams have scouted the opponent's hitters very well. And the Yankees have done a great job of pitching to the hitters' weaknesses. And the Braves have not made many adjustments. I mean, you can look here. Six guys looking for their first base hit here in the World Series. They're going to have to make adjustments because the Yankees starters have done a great job of staying on the outer half of the plate and then coming back inside. Now, on the opposite side, the Yankees have done a great job. You, they have placed the pitchers that have thrown a lot of change-ups and pitched them away. So what have they done? Hit the ball back through the middle and the other way. That's the way you try to fight a guy if he's going to stay away from you. And they have done a great job. Both the right-handed hitters have hit the ball back through the middle, and the left-handed hitters have done the same thing. 
if the Braves are going to get back in this series, they're going to have to take a page from the Yankees and start hitting balls back through the middle and the other way, or it's going to be a short series. Okay, Joe, and now before the first pitch, back downstairs we go. Here's Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Well, Louis Soho is back here in New York. He returned from Venezuela after the funeral of his father. He is available tonight, and he's been told by Joe Torre to be ready for some action if he is needed for defensive purposes for Chuck Knobloch in the late innings. All right, Jim, just about everybody watching tonight either saw or has heard about your interview with Pete Rose following the All-Century Team celebration on Sunday night in Atlanta. You had something you wanted to say about that. Yes, Bob, after viewing the videotape, I can understand the reaction of many baseball fans. I thought that it was important to ask Pete Rose if this was the right moment for him to make an apology. If in doing so, the interview went on too long and took out some of the joy of the occasion, then I want to say to baseball fans everywhere that I am very sorry about this. Bob? Jim, thanks very much. And we're back with the first pitch of Game 3 from Yankee Stadium right after this. What's, what's up? Oh, that's, see, that's a miss. It's lame. Sports drinks, colas, like that's working up there. But you get something good. You know why you don't have game? Because you don't got milk. That's why. Vitamin D. I got you. Want the D? You need me. Oh, right there. Baskets that way, Chief. Yeah. Want game? Milk has nine essential nutrients for active bodies. When you guys are done denying, you know, your beverage problem, give me a call. I'll be in the fridge. Come on, Shake. guarantees earliest delivery to the most international cities. How? Let's just say we stop at nothing. Buongiorno. Vostro pacchetto. Grazie. Aspetti. È urgentissimo. Nessun problema. UPS, moving at the speed of business. We have a stand-up in progress at 211 Hazelwood. He's in there. Sir, drop the chalupa. Put it down and back away. Sir, don't be silly. Drop the chalupa. I said, drop the chalupa. Put it down, man. Yeah, drop the chalupa. Get your hands on the new chalupa. With a shell so crispy, flaky, chewy, tasty, you'll wonder why we put stuff in it at all. Just 99 cents, only at Taco Bell. Better get some backup. Roger. <laughs> the network television premiere, Men in Black, NBC, November 28th. A bold styling and driving statement. A world-class, no-compromise sports sedan and a marvelous bargain to boot. It's all systems go at your Southern California Nissan dealer. Right now, compare the world-class Maxima 2000 to the competition. Drive them all at one time in one place and see for yourself. Take the test drive challenge today and experience Maxima 2000. There's simply no other car like it. Test drive 2000. Now at your Southern California Nissan dealer. At MotherNature.com, we drink a lot of coffee. Organic coffee, because if it's not organic, you don't know. But this is just pure coffee. <laughs> 1.25 milligrams per bean, two cups a day, seven days a week. That works out to be 4,018, 60.2 thousand milligrams of caffeine per year. No, I don't think I'm drinking too much coffee. Why? Log on now. Your first purchase is free, up to $20. We've always helped our customers get just about anywhere. But first, we have to know where it is you want to go. Sit down with a Wells Fargo banker today to talk about your financial goals and what we can do to help you reach them. Wells Fargo. Imagine living life on a grander scale. Imagine tasting water when it's brand new, or being one with nature without going it alone. Introducing Ford Excursion. Discover the ultimate in capability from Ford Outfitters, offering you the most far-reaching sport utilities on earth. Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. Win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. As the top of the first approaches, here's the Budweiser starting lineup for the Atlanta Braves. 
And right off the top, you see one of their problems. Gerald Williams is two for his last 30. And the first two spots in their order have produced one for 16 without any walks in the first two games. So they haven't hit the ball, and neither have they been able to reach base to run the bases. They stole 14 bases against the Mets in the National League Championship Series. They haven't been able to get on, and in game two they were behind right away, so they haven't been able to use that tactic against the Yanks. Well, one of the problems they'll have trying to steal bases or move runners today is Andy Pettit. He has one of the greatest pickoff moves in the game today, so they're going to have to be careful there. But they definitely have to get something started early in this ball game. You can't wait till the fourth or fifth inning and start to score runs. You're already down two games to none. You have to put some pressure on the Yankees here at Yankee Stadium. Atlanta has lost four of their last five games. The only victory in that string, the game six win that clinched the pennant against the Mets. But even there, they almost blew a 5 nothing lead. In fact, they did fall behind and had to come back. So they've been shaky of late. Well, you're right, Bob. They, they fought adversity all year, and they came through with fi flying colors. There is a movie written about the pride of the Yankees. I think the Atlanta Braves have a lot of pride, too, and I think that's going to show tonight. They have to prove to the world that they're not going to get swept by the Yankees, and if they don't win tonight, it's a great possibility of that happening. And the Yanks take the field. In pursuit of their 25th world championship. All this talk about team of the decade. To put it in some kind of perspective, we already know we're looking at the franchise of the century when we talk about the Yankees. Since 1921, they've been in 36 of the 78 World Series played. They've been in almost half the World Series. No doubt they are the team of the century. Franchise of the century, we should say. Another problem for the Braves tonight, they faced Del Duque and they faced David Cohn, two right-handers who dropped down through a lot of pitches on the outer half of the plate. They're going to face Andy Pettit today, who pitches inside to the right-handed hitters. He throws a cut fastball, and he likes to get in tight on the right-handed hitters, and then he'll sink the ball away occasionally. But his best pitch is the cut fastball he throws in on the right-handers, and they're going to have to make that adjustment. Here's the scouting report on Andy Pettit. Well, we talked about, you know, his good cut fastball. He also has a two-seam fastball. That's the one that sinks away from the right-handed hitter. And he always and he started to work out a half of the plate a little bit more. He's got one of the great pickoff moves in baseball, so I don't believe that the Braves are going to be able to steal any bases. They may try hit and run or try to move some guys, but I think the important thing is they're going to have to adjust to his cut fastball and his sinker. And now the defense behind him, Joe. Well, it's a pretty good defense. I mean, Chad Curtis, only one error in the 47 starts he made during the regular season. He is the change in the outfield. Ricky Lede has played out there the first two ball games. So he's a change. And Chad Curtis is one of those kind of guys, he's just a tough player. He'll do a few things. There's Ricky Lede. Ricky Lede is probably the Yankee left fielder of the future. But Chad Curtis runs well. He plays pretty good defense. He really hustles. I think that's the key. And he brings a lot of excitement to this Yankee ball club and, and, and a lot of intensity. Back to Andy Pettit, his 14 and 11 mark is misleading. At the All-Star break, Pettit was just five and seven, and right up to the trade deadline, it was no secret that George Steinbrenner was shopping him around. Now they're glad they kept him. He went nine and four in the season's second half. And in the postseason, he's two and oh, and his ERA is under two. This is his fourth World Series start. The first was a disaster. He was the 12-1 loser here to the Braves in game one in 1996. Then he came back to beat John Smoltz in a 1-0 classic in Atlanta in Game 5. And he was the 3-0 winner in the Game 4 clincher at San Diego as the Yankees swept the Padres last year. He threw seven shutout innings, so he has a string of 16 consecutive shutout innings pitched in World Series play. He has really pitched well in you know, his last few World Series ball games. He has proven that he's a big game pitcher. There was a lot of question about him being a big game pitcher early in his career but now he has proven that he is a quality pitcher under pressure looking for some support from recent history the Braves won two of three in this ballpark in interleague play from the Yankees in July if they do it again it would get them back to Atlanta a called strike the plate umpire is Steve Ripley from the National League, Darrell Cousins of the American League at first, Jerry Davis, NL at second, Jim Joyce, American League at third, Randy Marsh, National League, left field line, 
Rocky Rowe of the American League calls the plays down the line in right. Off the outside corner, a ball and a strike. Watching these first two pitches, Bob, he's following the scouting report and pitching the same way El Duque did and David Cohn. He's staying away from the hitters, even though his best pitch is to cut fastball. There's the cutter. Down and in, two and one. And all you have to do is watch Joe Girardi. If he moves away, it's the fastball. That's a sinker. And if he moves in, it's going to be a hard cutter in. Looking sinker. Yes. On the corner. That's what you get. I mean, the catcher will make his pitcher work. He's making him use the sinker so far in this ballgame by moving away. He came off the plate inside just to keep Gerald honest. There he goes back out there again. And Williams spoils it. Gerald is 7 for 15 in his career against his old Yankee teammate, Andy Pettit. He's hoping to reach base for the first time in this World Series. And he's a guy that the Braves do not necessarily look at him as a leadoff hitter. They look at him as a guy to start, jump start their offense. He's not a guy they want him to send up there and take a lot of pitches. Poke to right, and it drops in front of O'Neill. A hopeful sign it wasn't hit hard, but well placed. Well, the, the key is he went the other way with it. We talked about the Yankees stand on the outer half with sinkers, and this is the cut fastball, but it's on the outer half of the plate. And look at that. He goes out there and fights it off the other way. And that's what you want. What, look at that. See, he's going to right field. He wasn't trying to pull that ball. They've been trying to pull the ball, and they have not had any success on pitches away. Williams stole 19 bases during the regular season. Pettit works to Boone, but first to toss over. You're not going to be able to steal bases, and it's tough to hit and run with a guy with such a great move. So the question is, how do you try to get this offense started if you are the Braves? I don't think you bunt this early in the ball game, but you definitely want to try to get off on top in this situation because you're down two games to none. Boone looks to bunt. Well, I was wrong. <laughs> but I agree. I agree with the fact you try to get the runs early. I, I agree that you need to make something happen early in the ball game if you're the Braves. It got Girardi on the meat hand, but Joe's okay. On, and Bobby Cox knows how important this game is. If you fall down 3-0, it's going to be almost impossible to come back. But how about Bobby's demeanor? Completely calm. You couldn't tell the difference between the way he acted in the clubhouse before tonight's game and a Tuesday night in July. Totally relaxed. Betraying no tension at all, although his insides must be churning. No doubt about that. But I think what, what Bobby has is the confidence in the Tom Glavins, the John Smoltz, and the, the Matt Greg Maddox who are going to pitch the next three ball games for him. Well, you see how good his move is. Gerald Williams didn't even have a big lead, and he almost got picked off. Now watch Andy Pettit hang. He hangs with his right foot. He hangs it up there. See right there? And now he steps over there. And Gerald didn't have any idea of where he was going with that move. He's thrown one pitch to Brett Boone. Bunted foul. The count 0 and 1. Come on, Williams with a modest lead. The measure of a guy's effectiveness in terms of his pickoffs isn't just the total number of pickoffs, much the same as an outfielder's assist. Part of it is the attempts that don't take place. You don't run on a guy with a strong arm in right field or whatever. And how short a lead a lot of these base runners take is more of a measure of Pettit's effectiveness than the pickoffs themselves. Now he comes to the plate and misses high and away. And remember, Bob, if you keep a guy close to first base, he can't go from first to third on a single. 
ground balls in the hole if you dive and knock it down you're able to get him at second base so you're taking away a lot of the base running skills that a guy has when he can't read your move from first base. The one one. is hit in the air to right center field O'Neill turns trying to track it down looking up it's off the wall on his way to third is Williams he'll be stopped there by the coach Ned Yost as Boone slides into second with a double. The ball really carried out to right center Joe. I didn't think he hit it that well but I don't even think O'Neill thought he hit it that well. But remember one thing here they're going the other way they're making the adjustments they're not trying to pull everything. Look at this a cut fastball away Boone goes the other way as did Gerald Williams. They're making adjustments to things that they have seen so far in the series. And this ball just continued to rise as you're, you were saying I mean I didn't think it was going that far and it, and Paul O'Neill finally looks up like it's going out of the ballpark and it hits about three feet from the top of the wall. In two hitters Andy Pettit has given up more hits than El Duque and David Cohn did in seven innings each. Chipper Jones takes a ball. And I think a lot of that is the fact that talking to Don Baylor talking amongst themselves they have realized that they're going to have to take Andy Pettit the other way and they've done a good job so far. Yankee infield of course is back they'll concede a run in this situation. In there, one and one. Cuts and misses, a ball and two strikes. And that's Andy Pettit's favorite pitch to a right handed hitter. He starts the ball on the inside part of the plate and it breaks off the plate inside. And Chipper asks for time. Gerald Williams blooped the single. Brett Boone banged a double off the wall and right. Second and third, nobody out. As you see, Jones became a much more productive hitter from the right side of the plate this year. He credits Don Baylor with getting him to be more aggressive against lefties, especially early in the count. Here's Pettit's 1 2 pitch. Swung on and bounced to third. Brocious kicks it, picks it up and throws and gets him, but a run scores. Well Brocious had made up his mind he was coming to the plate but the Braves had Gerald Williams going on contact there and he was on his way to the plate. Now watch Brocious he's coming to the plate with this ground ball and he may have a shot at Gerald Williams see he's coming home you can see the, his body position but he misses the ball picks it up in time and throws a strike to first base. See he's coming home with it and all of a sudden he loses it now he's quick enough to pick it up and throw a strike to Martinez at second first base. Boone stayed at second here's the cleanup man Brian Jordan. Ball one to him Brian is 0 for 7 in the World Series but narrowly missed a home run in the first inning of game two the wind kept his drive to left in the park. Two and oh Andrew Jones on deck. This is the first time the Braves have been able to break out on top and and think that they have a chance to do something here against the Yankees offensively that is. A hitter's pitch. And taken high and away three and oh and they put a little pressure on the Yankees they forced Brocious to have to decide whether to go to first base or come home with that ball and he didn't field it cleanly. So a lot of things change the way a team can play if you can put a little more pressure on them and be a little more aggressive yourself. Taken for strike one. Andy Pettit is 27 years old 
6'5", 220, from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. In first inning trouble in game three. And he walks Brian Jordan. Now here comes Andrew Jones, one Atlanta Brave who for sure is happy to see Yankee Stadium. As a 19-year-old, he homered in each of his first two World Series at-bats in Game 1 in 1996. Andy Pettit, as you see, was the victim on the first one. That one's rolled foul this year in the three interleague games played here in July. Jones went four for 11 with two home runs. One of those homers off Mariano Rivera. And Bobby Cox made a point of saying this is his ballpark. That's the reason they have moved him back up to sixth in the order. He hit eighth in game two. So Bobby thinks he has a lot of confidence here. To fit. He's up to fifth today, I should say. He takes a strike, going two. Two on, one out, a run already home, and Pettit's 0-2 pitch to Andrew Jones. Just off the inside corner. Well, this is a cut fastball, and Pettit usually gets a right-hander to bite on this. And it's just off the plate, says Steve Ripley, and you can see there it appears that it was just off on the inside corner. Jones nubs one out toward the mound. Pettit's got it. The runners move up, and there's the second out. Well, it may not look like Atlanta's beating up on the Yankees to get the run that they have so far and get the runners in second and third. But at least I think their approach is better. I mean, they're not trying to pull off. They're not swinging too hard. They're not going for the fences. And they're hitting balls to the opposite side. He forced Chipper Jones to pull the ball because he threw him all cut fastballs inside. So here's the D.H., Jose Hernandez, the former Cub, taking a ball. He hit 266 for the year with 19 homers. <laughs> 2 0, Eddie Perez, the catcher, waits on deck. Brett Boone at third, Brian Jordan at second with two out. Three and oh to Hernandez. And Bob, the Braves have accomplished one thing already this inning. They have forced Andy Pettit to throw 26 pitches here in the first inning. And that means that his teammates, all the guys sitting on the bench, have had an opportunity to see that. And that's what Joe Torre was saying. He said 21, but it's 26. Hernandez swings at the 3-0, and Jeter gobbles it up. May have done Pettit a favor. The Yankees are out of the top of the first, and the Braves score once. Back to the Bronx after this. Okay, really simple. AT&T, seven cents a minute, all day, every day. That's it. The rest of this commercial is yours to enjoy as you choose. Make calls. All day, every day. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only where you see this sign. What do you want? 
fewer children. Better world, a larger life. At American General Financial Group, we help 12 million Americans build a life large enough to hold their children's dreams with retirement services, investments, life insurance, and consumer loans. At American General, the future starts today. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. Ask my family about the appetizer I got at the Olive Garden. It was their Sicilian scampi. They saute shrimp in olive oil and wine and top it with fresh tomatoes. It took me just half a shrimp to know I had the best. Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. Chevy trucks are the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. And now, during Chevy Truck Month, you can lease the truck, the 2000 Chevy Silverado. With a more powerful V8 than any 4x4 pickup from Ford or Dodge. During Chevy Truck Month, you'll find the biggest selection of the year on the most dependable, longest lasting trucks on the road. Chevy Trucks. Back at Yankee Stadium, and note the contrast concerning the first two hitters. Through the first two games, the number one and two spots in the Yankee order are six for 17, plus two walks, and an important sacrifice in game one by Chuck Knobloch. Now tonight, Williams singled and Boone doubled to reverse the trend for the Braves. Well, Bob, do we really know how healthy Tom Glavin is, is a question that I would ask. He's been ill, he's lost a few pounds, he's gained some of them back. I don't think we'll know if he's okay till about the third inning because it just may take a while. Let's take a look at the defense. There you see Brian Hunters at first base. He made two errors in the eighth inning of game one, but he is a very good defensive first baseman and Bobby Cox really likes him defensively. And they were not easy plays he made errors on in game one. This may remind some of the 1991 World Series. Chuck Knobloch against Tom Glavin. Then it was Twins and Braves. In World Series play, Tom Glavin is four and three. But in his three World Series losses, he's allowed only four earned runs in 23 innings. Look at that career World Series earned run average. Pitched one hit ball through eight innings in the game six clincher against the Indians in 95. Let's go downstairs to Craig Sager. Leo Mazzoni says Tom Glavin may get hit tonight. He might lose, but I won't because he doesn't have his stuff. Some pitchers can look lousy in warm-ups, then fire a shutout. Some can throw lights out and then get hammered, but Mazzoni says Glavin has never been one of them, as the warm-up was very consistent. All right, Craig, and Knobloch slams one to right. Jordan races over, got a glove on it, and it pops out. Knobloch speeding for second. He's in there. Well, the one thing, when you're down 2-0 and and you get a chance to make the play, you're going to have to make it. I don't know exactly how they're going to score, there, score this, but Jordan reaches out. It looked like he may have lost the ball or something because he slowed up before he got there. See, right there is a, a bank of lights here, and you see that he may have lost it right there at the last second. They're scoring it as an error, but you see he gets there, but it did appear that he slowed up and maybe looked away from the ball. So he could have been looking into the bank of lights. Yeah, those lights right there, that's where it was, right center field. A two-base error. And Glavin, staked to a 1-0 lead, finds the leadoff man in scoring position. Here's Jeter. Four for nine in the series. He skies one to right. Jordan for the catch. Knobloch tags. He'll test him. Jordan's throw. Not nearly in time. And that's big league baseball right there by Derek Jeter. Taking the ball the other way, moving Chuck Knobloch up to third with less than two outs. And Jordan camps under this one. He wants to make a strong throw, but it's a little bit offline, and Knobloch 
runs very well and the ball was pretty deep. You can see it's a little bit offline. I'm trying to see exactly how the Braves are going to play this. Walt Weiss is in at shortstop. They're in on the left side and back on the right. Boone is deep at, first, at second and Brian Jordan deep at first base. So they figure they've got a chance for a play at the plate or to hold Knobloch if he trickles one to the left side on a bad swing. But they're back if he pulls it. And he pops it over their heads into shallow left to tie the game. These Yankees are almost ruthlessly opportunistic. You give them the slightest chance and they pounce on it. And that was very important for the Yankees to come right back. Now they're even again. And it doesn't give the Braves any hope of saying, OK, we're going to play from ahead in this ballgame. You see, all he does is just reach out and slap it to left field. But he gets the job done. And the fact that Derek Jeter hit the ball to right field to move Knobloch to third made it much easier for Paul O'Neill to go up there with an idea of just getting the ball in play and getting the runner in from third. Here's Bernie Williams taking a ball down and away. It's not really apt to call these Yankees the Bronx Bombers. No. Tino Martinez led them in homers for the second consecutive year with 28. This in a season where 45 big leaguers hit more than 30. Line drive caught by Hunter and he steps on the bag to double O'Neill off. So it's 1-1 after one. Sells me morning coffee, wishes me good luck This is for the people in my neighborhood They help me through the day and make me feel good This bus for yeah. you Drivers, cab drivers, local gas station guys, Sal and his brother make a mean pizza pie. Tattooed Tony in his cool muscle shirt. Maria on the corner looking good in a skirt. This is for the people in my neighborhood who help me through the day and make me feel good. This bus for you. And you and you and you. This bus for you. Find some. Slay. Slay. Yes, my butter kiss. Time to rub the bunions. Great. You're so sweet, Johnny. <sighs> Between the toes. I know. I know. Oh. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. Introducing the all-new Chevy Monte Carlo. <laughs> Green. The side you show the world is up to you. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by Chevrolet. Chevy will be there. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of Major League Baseball. This Bud's for you. And by E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. Over 165 feet long, the Bud One airship flies high over the biggest sporting events in the world. Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball and the World Series. Bottom of the Atlanta order in the top of the second, Eddie Perez, Brian Hunter, and Walt Weiss.
Ball one to Eddie. Andy Pettit was touched for a run in the top of the first. The Yankees got it right back off Tom Glavin in the bottom half with the help of a Brian Jordan error. Perez fouls it off. And most of the hitters have tried to go the other way, but two things happen when you try to go back through the middle and the other way. It lets you see the ball a little longer, and it keeps you from swinging at a lot of bad pitches. And so far in this ball game, the Braves have not swung at a lot of bad pitches like they did the first two ball games. Threw it by him, a ball and two strikes. Perez, the National League Championship Series MVP, going 10 for 20 with two homers against the Mets. Also did well against the Yankees in that interleague series. He was 6 for 11 here at Yankee Stadium in July. Still 1 and 2. This is Brian Jordan moments ago with the veteran reserve Otis Nixon talking about the ball he mishandled in right field. It was right in the middle of his glove, not off the tip or anything. Smack in the middle of the glove and it popped out. I think he's saying that he, he lost it at the last second due to the lights. Perez goes out of the strike zone and sits down. We talked about how patient the Braves have been and they had a situation with Andy Pettit in the first inning. Three balls, no strikes to Hernandez. Now watch. He swings at this ball, so he's way off balance. The one thing you do not do, if you're 3-0, and you get a pitch you can drive. And when he came in, you're going to see Bobby Cox talking to him. And see, Bobby is basically saying, okay, I gave you the 3-0, and but I want you to get a little better pitch than that. Here's Brian Hunter. Swings on the first one and rips it to left for a one-out single. The Braves need some production out of their first baseman. And, and he's a much better hitter than he has showed us, you know, in his at bat. And maybe that's because he has not been getting enough starts. He's actually been coming in for defense or maybe pinch hitting. And those things are very difficult to do. Combined in this postseason, Ryan Klesko and Brian Hunter are now 7 for 42. They miss the big cat, Andres Galarraga. And no doubt about that. I mean, he's a guy that produces big runs for you with one swing of the bat. And he's a presence in the lineup that and changes the way you pitch to whoever surrounds him. And he's a great first baseman. <laughs> so here's Walt Weiss, the switch hitting shortstop, in the ninth slot in a DH game. One thing you can do with a guy that has a great move like Andy Pettit, you can sit there and just try to guess and take off on his first movement. In the dirt, Girardi can't find it. And on his way to second is Hunter. And a good job by Hunter because it, it looked like Girardi had kept the ball in front of him, but he never gave up on it. He didn't just stop. Now watch, it's a breaking ball, and it goes right in, into the dirt. Now watch Girardi. He, see, it appears that he's kept the ball in front of him. Actually, it hits the foot of Walt Weiss and bounces away, and the alert Brian Hunter goes down to second base. And the 1-0 pitch taken down and away. Weiss is from nearby the Bronx, grew up in Suffern, New York, about 30 miles north of Yankee Stadium. His dad ran a magazine stand at Grand Central Station. So he's a brave who feels pretty much at home coming to New York. The 2-0 pitch. This is again 3-0. See, that's what the Braves are doing. They're not swinging at that ball that starts in the strike zone and moves out. And the reason is because they're staying on the ball a little bit longer because they're not trying to pull everything. So they've done a good job so far. And don't be surprised if he doesn't let Y swing 3-0. He takes a strike. And I'm sure Pettit, the fact that they swung 3-0 in the first inning tells Pettit that if he gets behind a lot of hitters, they're going to attack. They're going to be aggressive. And he's not going to be able to just lay the 2-0 or 3-0 pitch into the strike zone. He swings and bounces one over Pettit. Knoblock's got it. Here's his throw, and it's true. 
to Martinez. Always a concern these days when Knobloch has to make the play. And again, you see Walt Weiss trying to go back through the middle, and he hits a chopper over the mound. And Knobloch has been okay when he doesn't have time to think. He just grabs it and throws to first base. And very accurate throw there. But again, it's up the middle, in which is the right way approach to take against a guy like Pettit. So Hunter's at third with two out. Gerald Williams trying to pick him up. Ball one with his first inning single. Williams is now eight for 16 lifetime against Andy Pettit. Down and away, 2-0. and oh. Very good patience being showed by the Atlanta Braves here. They're getting, they're taking those pitches off the plate, getting ahead of Pettit. You've got to do some damage once you get there. But so far, they've been able to make Pettit throw a lot of pitches, and they're not biting on that sinker that's sinking just off the plate outside. That one's in there at the knees. And that's... That's good patience there as well. You get a guy 2-0 and he makes a pitcher's pitch, you go ahead and take it. That pitch just nips the outside corner, and you shouldn't swing at that pitch when you have the account in your favor. Andy Pettit has been behind in the count to a lot of hitters early in this game. Here's his 2-1 pitch. Bounce back to him, and he's out of the second. Well, he got him to bite. Small business software, $400. Letterhead, $610. Office supplies, $90. Remembering who you work for, priceless. MasterCard Business Bonuses lets you earn miles good on any airline, no blackouts. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard Business Card. Craving for the new chicken club from Burger King, an emergency pouch in the seat back in front of you contains one sandwich. Hey, that, that's my sandwich. Give me that sandwich, lady! Oh, oh, Just give me the sandwich! Everybody's craving the new chicken club. After all, it's a masterpiece of all white meat chicken, crispy bacon, lettuce, and tomato. Woohoo! Burger King, have it your way. So what will happen to all this now that you're going virtual? We're not going virtual. Well, I read you're getting into internet trading, online cash management. Well, we are, yes. The end of an era. Not at all. Online trading and the rest of it are simply new tools we're making available. You don't have available. to sugarcoat it for me, but I must tell you, I'm going to miss our little chats. Nelson, I'm not going away. The office isn't going away. The coffee? The ticker? <laughs> not going away. What about the little bull? Not going away. Now from Artisan Home Entertainment. The search of the three missing Montgomery College students continues tonight. Young kids started disappearing. We can never locate them. Never found any clues. Please help us! See what's never been seen. Oh my God, what a On the Blair Witch Project on video or DVD. Now with newly discovered footage. On the Project from Artisan Home Entertainment. I love you, Mom. Dad. In stores now. We talked about the hitters make some adjustments. Watch uh, Mel Stoudemire. Look at his hands. He's saying they're going the other way. They're trying to go the other way. Now watch, he'll give you a motion that this, you're going to have to come inside eventually. So what he's basically saying is they're making adjustments. See right there, he's saying you're going to have to come inside to keep them honest. And you can tell that the Braves are trying to make some adjustments. And of course, the 
Mel Stottlemyre and the Yankees see them making the same adjustments we see here. So we'll see if Pettit changes and starts coming inside a little more often. Chili Davis's first at bat of this World Series slices one down the right field line and foul. Chili was a twin in 1991 when they faced Atlanta in the World Series. He hit two home runs in that series, one of them off Tom Glavin. If this is Atlanta's last stand, trying to establish themselves as the team of the decade, it's appropriate that they give the ball tonight to Glavin and tomorrow to Smoltz because they're the only two players who have been with the team all the way through this run of excellence. They're the only two who go back to the 1991 pennant. And a lot of times, like hitters, pitchers feed off of each other. Broken bat roller, Weiss, runs it over to Hunter to get Davis. And folks, you can log on to msnbcsports.com for an exclusive webcast Featuring the Reds all-star Barry Larkin, who provides his analysis of the key plays and strategy in tonight's game, plus answers fan email. You can also check out real-time in-game stats, complete with a box score. MSNBCSports.com, the official website of NBC Sports. We mentioned in the last inning that Tino Martinez was again the Yankees' leading home run hitter with 28, same number that led the club last year. That is a very modest figure considering the offensive explosion all around baseball. This is not a team that bludgeons you. This is a team that's almost numbingly effective with little things as we've seen in the first two games of this World Series. Bob I don't think we can overstate how smart they are as, as players and how smart they are as hitters. We saw them get behind in the count to Millwood. He'd make curveballs away wherever they threw it. They would go the other way with the pitches. This ball's hit well to center. Andrew Jones going back to the track to take it in his stride. Mr. Nonchalance. Well, <laughs> he always seems to get there in time and make the play, but you're always worried. Because he doesn't. Look at this. I mean, he is so relaxed. Well, if you're good, you're good. Already the real deal in center field hasn't found himself yet at the plate. But every baseball man will tell you he's a potential five tool player a guy who could be an all star for many many years. He has all five tools the question is does he reach his potential in all those areas. A ball and a strike to Brocious. And a lot of times that's a big if Bobby for a lot of players. Well, but Andrew Jones being here since he was 19 years old I think one of these days something's just going to click and you're going to have the guy that they anticipate. Brocious gives him another chance. And the Yankees are done in the bottom of the second. Clavin sets them down in order. Back to the Bronx after this. If you don't get AC Delco brand name parts, you'd better get a good brand name shoe. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. No matter what kind of car or truck that comes into my shop, there's one brand of automotive parts I can depend on. AC Delco. If you're not asking for it, you're asking for it. Uh, give me soybeans. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, scroll up. Buy it! Buy! Next page. Close that, close that. All right, beautiful. Sell! Sell! Sell it! All right, highlight four. Scroll up. Up, up, up. The voice activated wearable computer. Buy it! Buy it! Buy it! You're a baby. It may be far out. Uh, hi, Donna. Oh, yeah, the meeting was fine. But it's not far off. I'll be on the afternoon flight. There's my husband, Nolan Ryan, still throwing heat. Can you believe he's got arthritis? You see, Nolan's doctor says the best way to control arthritis pain is to keep moving. And to make it easier, he recommends Advil. Nothing's been proven stronger on arthritis pain, yet it's gentle on his stomach. In fact, I take Advil for my arthritis pain. That way, we can exercise together. Advil, stronger than pain. 
When was the last time you felt 284 horses tugging at your soul? When was the last time you immersed yourself in hand-tufted virgin leather? Can you really put a price on this kind of perfection? Actually, you can, because this $70,000 car could cost you over $326,000 in retirement savings. We just thought you should know. Ask a financial advisor about Sun America, the retirement specialist. NBC invites you on a magical adventure of forbidden love. Families are going to fight each other. Sure! Starts an epic battle that could end their world and ours. Leprechauns, NBC, one week from Sunday. Brought to you by Kodak Advantix Cameras and Film. A better way to take pictures further. Between innings, an appreciative ovation for Tony Gwynn, who played here in this ballpark last October as a member of the Padres in the World Series. He won this year's Roberto Clemente Award in recognition of humanitarian efforts as well as ball playing excellence. This season, of course, saw Gwynn reach the 3,000 hit plateau. Here's Brett Boone, who doubled to the opposite field in the first. Tied at one, top of the third. He goes that way again toward the gap in right center field, and again it's well hit, and this one is off the 385 sign. On his way to second, and holding there with a leadoff double. Well, so far, what the Braves are doing is working in that they're getting some opportunities to score some runs. They were not getting opportunities in the first two ball games. Watch this. He's going the other way. Doesn't try to pull the ball. That's a sinker away, and Boone finds the gap. This is excellent hitting by Brett Boone. We've seen him do this twice now, and he just slams it in the gap in right center field, almost out of the ballpark both times. Hit, hits the wall there at the 385 mark. But a good job of adjusting here so far by the Braves. And starting this inning, Bob, Glavin had thrown only 16 pitches through two innings, whereas Pettit had thrown 41 just starting this inning. He faces Chipper Jones, whose ground out to third produced a run in the first. He takes a strike. Brett Boone has now doubled in his last three at-bats. He had a pinch hit double in the ninth in game two. And going back to game one, Bob, that's his fourth straight base hit. And look at that, three or four hits to right field. That tells you that the Braves are trying to make some adjustments against Andy Pettit. But he is pitching Chipper Jones much differently than he is the other hitters. He's thrown two cut fastballs inside. He's trying to keep him from hitting the ball the other way in this situation. He's thrown a couple of cut fastballs in, which makes Chipper realize he's going to have to open up and get to the ball. And that's why he hit the ground ball at third base his first time up. And the 0-2 pitch. There it is again. He pushes it up the middle. Jeter fields it behind the bag, and Boone moves to third. And he gets the job done. That was a cut fastball in again, but he just kind of pushed it up the middle, and that was a very good description. Watch. He just pushes this ball off of him. He doesn't have a big swing. Watch the location. A cut fastball in, and he just draws his arms in and pushes the ball up the middle. And he's out at first base, but he gets the job done, moving Boone over to third with less than two outs. And they're going to play the infield in. Against Jordan, who walked in the first and is hitless in the series. Well, you'll see Pettit try to get him to hit a sinker and try to keep it on the infield. That one, of course, sunk too much, but he'll try to get him to hit a sinker or that cut fastball down and in, just try to keep the ball on the infield. Line to right, base hit. Here comes Boone, 2-1 Braves. And the Braves, you have to give them a lot of credit. As I said before, they have a lot of pride in Atlanta, too. And these guys are showing you what they're made of. They're taking all these pitches and going the other way off of Andy Pettit. They're going to force him to come inside. Here's a sinker away again. Look at this. Beautiful hitting there by Jordan. He just takes it and goes the other way with it. I mean, everyone that's walked up there, other than Chipper Jones, they've been aiming towards right field. They have forced Chipper Jones to try to pull the ball because they're just coming in off the plate. You don't often hear the term game plan 
in baseball. That's right. a football term, but yeah. it's pretty clear the Braves have a game have plan a game tonight. Plan. And we talked about before they're going to ha they had to change something. You can't get beat the same way over and over. You can't let the Yankee pitching staff pitch you the same way for three straight straight days and you do not make any adjustments. And so far they've made very good adjustments. Now Andrew Jones lays off. They check it first. He didn't go. They've only got two runs but they have five base hits already and they have forced Pettit to throw a lot of pitches. So they are accomplishing a lot just in these first couple of innings although they only have two runs to show for it. A ball and a strike. The Yankees must think Glavin has it tonight because they played the infield in right. early in the game. I, I was a little surprised at that too Bobby except they feel like with Glavin's sinker if he tries to pull it he's going to hit a chopper on the infield and they would be able to hold Moon at third. But you saw Jordan just take the pitch and go the other way. And the 1 1 pitch, first another throw, and Jordan's back. The Braves were running at will against the Mets except when Kenny Rogers started game two with his great pickoff move against Pettit. They'll find it difficult to get much of a jump. Jones rolls it foul. We talked about the Yankees coming back from 0 2 against the Braves in the 96 World Series but just prior to that. The Braves themselves were down 3-1 to the Cardinals in the LCS and won three straight with their backs to the wall to get to the World Series. So both these clubs know it can be done. Jordan eyeing Pettit. Pettit comes home to Jones, who hits it in the air to shallow left. Chad Curtis coming on, won't get there. Jordan stops at second on the bloop single. Well, Andrew drops one in the shallow left field. And I want to make a point. Every hitter that the Braves have cannot take the ball the other way. Andrew Jones is not a guy that can take the ball the other way. But he gets a fastball up. He gets jammed with it. But he gets enough of it to get it over the infield. So cut fastball in. He gets jammed. Curtis is playing a little bit towards left center field. So the ball drops in the shallow left field for a base hit. And the Braves have runners at first and second now. And the Braves guys, they know this is the game. It's, you know, if, if they lose today, you know, you're not going to come back and beat the Yankees four in a row. So this is very, very important to them. Another chance for the D.H. Jose Hernandez. Swings on the first one and smacks it down the left field line. That'll be extra bases. Jordan comes home to score. Andrew Jones being waved home. He's right behind him and he touches the plate on the double by Hernandez. It's 4-1 Atlanta. This is one of those situations that Mel Stottlemyre was talking to Andy Pettit about on the bench. He said, you're going to have to come inside sometime to keep these guys honest. Everyone has been going the other way. He came inside. He jammed Andrew Jones, and, and he got a base hit. So he tries to throw that cut fastball in on Hernandez, and he just rips it down the line. See, that pitch is inside. He was trying to make adjustments to what the Braves have been doing. And Hernandez and Jones, two guys that, in my opinion, are not going to go the other way. They're not capable of changing their, their hitting style. But he came in on them, and he wasn't able to get them out. Eddie Perez fouls it off. So he comes in on Perez again. You see Andy Pettit making adjustments to what the Braves did. So they forced him to change the style that he wanted to use starting this ball game. Jason Grimsley added to the World Series roster when they dropped Hideki Arabu gets ready. Pettit works to Perez who lines it to left Curtis sprinting in and he makes the catch.
Well, Andy Pettit took a little off of this breaking ball. He gets Perez out front. See, it's a curveball. He gets him out front. And you see Pettit, he's saying, get in here, get in here and catch that. And he sees that he's going to be caught. He thought he was going to have to back up home plate if it dropped in front of Chad Curtis. But it hung up long enough for Curtis to make the play. Now Brian Hunter, who had a sharp single to left his first time up. Down and in ball one. One in the first, three here in the third for Atlanta. The runner breaks for third, and he's got it stolen without a play. It's much easier to steal third base off of a left-handed pitcher than it is a right-handed pitcher because of their motion and them not being able to pick up the shortstop on a pickoff. And they're usually more deliberate going to the play because they have the high leg kick. And you can see no chance for Joe Girardi to throw to third base as Hernandez steals it. The 1-1 pitch to Hunter. Two balls and a strike. And a lot of people say, why do you steal third with two outs? Well, the great Maury Wills explained to me once, there are nine different ways that you can score from third with less than two outs, with two outs, I'm sorry, than you can from second. So it's very important to get over there. It gives you nine more ways that you can score. Bouncer foul. In the first two games, 18 innings worth of at-bats, the Braves scored three runs and had seven hits. In two and two-thirds tonight, they have four runs and seven hits. Bob, this is the beauty of baseball. We've seen the Braves make adjustments to what Pettit was doing. Now we see Pettit making adjustments to what the Braves are doing. Off-speed breaking ball taken in the air to right, and O'Neill retreats to make the catch. Jose Hernandez, two-run double, the big blow in a three-run inning, 4-1 Atlanta. Remember life in the fast lane? I do. First you meet, then you get married, and things slow down. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. To help you keep up, drive the supercharged Regal GS Sports Sedan. Plenty of room, standard traction control, and the most power in its class. Get up to 3567 average finance savings with 1.9% APR financing for 60 months on 1999 Regals. Official car of the supercharged family. Stop it! Need brakes? Ah! Now during the Midas $40 lifetime brakes rebate, save $20 per axle or $40 for your whole car. Lifetime guaranteed $40 in savings right now. Go safely. Go Midas. You are a messenger of hope and the only one in whom the future can be entrusted. Is it not time then to prepare for the journey ahead? You are a survivor. You are alone, but you are strong. Lexmark is changing the face of printing with a passion. The new Lexmark Z-Series printers. They have the highest inkjet resolution on the planet to make your ideas jump right off the page. Lexmark, passion for printing ideas. Man, that sandwich was good. Is there another one? Well, yeah, but we're saving it for daily. I'll be right back. When you get that craving for Wendy's bacon mushroom melt. Hey, Dave, you having fun? Yeah! Why don't you stay out a few more laps? Okay! With three strips of bacon and sautéed mushrooms in a cheddar cheese sauce, it's impossible to resist. Now, where's that sandwich? Wendy's bacon mushroom melt. When you gotta have one, you gotta have one. Daryl, I'm kinda hungry. I hope no one ate my lunch. People wonder, am I a point guard or a shooting guard? Jerry West, was he a point guard? or shooting guard. Clyde Frazier, point guard or shooting guard. Mike, point or two guard. I don't know either, but they were champions. It's our turn now. Tom Glavin with a three-run cushion to work with. 
as we go to the bottom of the third. And Bob, make no mistake about it, this game's a long way from being over because the Yankees are capable of stringing an inning together as well. So you see the pitches, 16 pitches in the two innings. So he is so far he's on top of his game. And the layoff hasn't caused him any control problems. He's able to throw strikes. And he's been able, he has good stuff. He's got good movement on his fastball. But it's exactly what you would expect from Tom Glavin. His 1 0 pitch to Curtis is off the outside corner. Steve Ripley is a National League umpire. He and Glavin familiar with each other. It's often said when Glavin starts that the strike zone of the home plate umpire is a key to the game. How do you view the way Ripley's calling them? Well, I think he's being pretty fair with both. I think he's got a pretty consistent strike zone so far. And he, I don't think he's missed any pitches. He looks like he's making good calls. The players are not complaining. I think that's the key for me. You know, you may have one player complain here or there, but if, if you have a lot of players complaining, that will tell you that his strike zone is moving all over the place. And Curtis fouls it off. Glavin, when he's sharp, lives on the outside corner. If the plate umpire says, well, an inch off the corner is a strike, Glavin goes there until he gets it to be two inches or three. And if he gets it out there, you're finished. Well, I, I think it works that way with he and Maddox. They're very similar type pitchers. Smoltz and Millwood a little more overpowering. They pitch a little different. They get a little bit more of the plate. Curtis pops it into shallow left. Gerald Williams will take care of it. Well, Bob, right there, we saw Glavin make an adjustment. Two pitches away, and then he came in on Curtis, and he wasn't able to handle it. You see, he mixes speeds well. He will not give in the hitters, meaning that if he gets behind 2-0, as he did there to Chad Curtis, he's not going to throw a ball down the middle of the plate and say hit it. And he's a good athlete like all the Braves pitchers. They fill their positions exceptionally well. Girardi, the catcher, hitting ninth and taking a ball. When the scouting report says that Glavin is a great all-round athlete. They're not blowing smoke. Right. He was taken in the second round by the Braves, in the fourth round by the NHL's LA Kings. In the air to deep right, Brian Jordan going back, track, wall, leaps, and pulls it down. Well, that makes up for the error in the first. Well, he gave him one, and now he takes one away. Good job by Brian Jordan. Brian Jordan's an excellent right fielder, so when he missed the ball in the first inning, I really believe the lights had something to do with it. He goes back, times his leap perfectly. Look at that. Falls into the wall, but he knows he's done his job. Keeps his eyes on the ball right there. Look at that. Yeah, you see right there, he kept his eyes on the ball completely. Now watch this in the first inning. His eyes trying to turn away at the last second. Right there, you can see him turn his head, and I think it was because of the lights. And, on the bank of lights here behind third base. Here's Knobloch. It was Chuck's drive that Jordan dropped in the bottom of the first. Girardi straps the tools back on. Two out, nobody on in the Yankee third. Line to left, in there for extra bases. It goes to the wall with Williams in pursuit. Now blocked with a two-out double. Well, he's hit the ball hard twice off of Glavin. We mentioned Brian Jordan wasn't able to run the other one down. He got there and dropped it. One ball, no strike count. Glavin trying to get the outside part of the plate, and he gets most of the outside corner. Knobloch pulls it down the line for a base hit. Right into the corner. And the Yankees have a two-out threat here. Despite his uncertain fielding, Knobloch remains productive at the plate in this postseason. Glavin to Jeter. Off-speed breaking ball misses. And Perez pays a visit to the mound. Tom Glavin is a two-time Cy Young Award winner, a four-time 20-game winner, 
a six time all star. He is building near Hall of Fame credentials. And he cut it in a 4 1 hole. But Jeter could draw them one closer with a hit here. He cuts and misses. Well, Jeter went out of the strike zone there. It's a fastball that tails away and up. And you see out of Z Jeter's zone. This will be up and off the plate. See it outside of the strike zone. Two and one. And that's what you're talking about. He went like three inches off the plate. Jeter. Bit. He went four inches off. He does not bite. Glavin beat the Yankees here 6 2 in July. He lost game three of the 96 World Series in Atlanta to David Cohn. Three balls and a strike. There's El Duque looking over the scouting report of the hitters and pointing something out. To Jose Posada. Jorge Posada, I should say. Jeter sitting on a 3 1 pitch. On the corner, even though Jeter thought he had the walk. Well, this is what the scouting report says. He will not give in. The count is three balls and one strike. He's not going to give in. He tries to hit the outside edge and he gets the call. And you have to remember, Paul O'Neill is on deck. So he doesn't want to give Jeter, maybe the Yankees' best hitter at this time. Something to hit. Got him looking. Beautiful right there. Jeter says, was that a strike? Says Ripley. Believe it or not, it was. Insecurities. Get analysis. CNBC and CNBC.com. Profit from it. This is our art. We sculpt in metal, paint in G-forces. You won't find our work in museums, for we are artists of the streets. Our art places form in harmony with function, moves body and soul. Cars are our passion. Engineering is our art. Acura. Alone on a desolate road, a runner searches for her soul, her spirit, and her sneakers. Seems our distribution plans didn't anticipate a foreign crisis. Who could have helped? Aeon, ensure your vision. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit fidelity.com to open an account. Oh, God, I can't even tell you how thrilled I was to see you tonight, Steve. I mean, trapped out in that storm, totally stuck, with no way to get home. And then I saw you crashing through those barricades in that big, huge, giant... Oh, what do you call those things? A uh, monster truck? Monster truck, like my knight in shining armor. I can't believe you were there. I mean, what are the odds? Do you believe in fate, Steve? Fate? Win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. Let's take a look at Tom Glavin's last two pitches to Derek Jeter. This one is toward the outside corner. It's called a strike. This is three and two now. This pitch here appears to be a strike to me. But what happens is Jeter's thinking, look, the plate is only 17 inches wide. If one is a strike, look at that. He says, wow, right there. He says, if one is a strike over the outside corner, that last one can't be a strike on the inside corner if the plate is only 17 inches wide. But as we said, if that's the way they'll be called, it's Tom Glavin's night.
Jeter still thinking about it as Pettit brings the 1 0 home to Walt Weiss. The problem, Bob, is he'll still be thinking about it when he steps in the batter's box next time up as well. Because you'll say, well, if he's going to stay away, I've got to go away. But if he comes inside, as he did on the 3 2 pitch, then I can't look away. There's a strike, 2 and 1. His first time up, Weiss sent a bouncer over the mound, and Chuck Knobloch made a nice running play on it. Bouncer Pettit's got it. That takes care of Weiss. And now that the All Century team has been selected, Major League Baseball and Mastercard want you, the fans, to name the starting lineup. Just log on to MajorLeagueBaseball.com, the official postseason site of Major League Baseball, to vote for your starters. The fan starting lineup will be announced tomorrow night during Game Four of the World Series, right here on NBC. Man, it was hard enough to select 30 players and a lot of very worthy people had to be left off. How in the world do you whittle it down to a starting nine? Gerald Williams loves a bunt, takes a ball. Gerald is singled and grounded out. We talked about the top of the Atlanta order. Tonight, they've gotten it done. Looks like he's taking until he gets a strike. Which is very unlike Gerald Williams, a free swinger by reputation. But I think he set the tone, Bob, in the first inning by going the other way. Boone followed by going the other way. We've seen Jordan go the other way. He swings on the 2 0 pitch, lifts it to deep center. Williams back, way back, and it's off the top of the wall. Williams make it Gerald Williams, not Bernie, who's chasing it down, heads for third as the ball bounced halfway back to the infield, and he's in with a triple. Gerald Williams sending it over the head of his buddy and former teammate Bernie Williams for a one out triple. Well he got the count in his favor. He gets a pitch and he tries to hammer it but he doesn't try to pull it. He goes straight away. Now this ball stays in the ballpark. Bernie thought it might go out. See watch he'll leap a little too quickly and the ball's coming down behind him and it hits the wall. And by the time they get it back in Gerald Williams is at third base with a triple. The infield comes in and Boone swings on the first one and grounds it over third for extra bases. Gerald Williams trots home. Boone with his fourth consecutive double. Three in this game and one in the ninth inning of game two. 5-1 Braves. And I tell you what, you have to give Brett Boone a lot of credit. He went the other way with two fastballs tailing away. He's smart enough to know that Pettit's not going to throw it out there again for him to slap it the other way. He waits for the ball inside. It looks like it's a curveball. It may be a cutter, but it's something inside. Look at that, inside, and he pulls it down the line for a base hit. The other pitches were out away from him, and he went the other way. This is the breaking ball in, and he pulls it inside the bag. Nothing Brocious could do, and he drives in another run, and he goes to second base with a double. So we have seen a good Braves attack tonight against Andy Pettit. By no means is this game over. Five to one, the fourth inning. But tomorrow night, John Smoltz against Roger Clemens, you might give Smoltz at this stage, considering the way they've each pitched of late, you might give him the edge in that matchup. We could be looking at a situation where the Braves have a decent chance to tie this series. Jason Grimsley has been throwing for a while. It doesn't get any easier for Pettit now that Stottlemyre has completed his visit to the mound. Here's Chipper. He's grounded out twice. And in the last 10 ball games, I mean the Yankees are 10 and 0 in their last 10 World Series ball games. Their starting pitching has been very, very good, and they've done the rest with their offense. I don't know if they'll know how to win coming in if someone if they have to go to the bullpen early. Yankee Stadium means something to Chipper Jones. As we mentioned earlier in the series, his dad idolized Mickey Mantle. Chipper felt the same. Met the Yankee great at age 20 when he was just coming up in baseball and described himself as frozen. 
totally speechless. Mantle stuck out his hand, said, I heard you're a good ball player, a switch hitter like me. Big smile on the mixed face. Shepard was like Ralph Cramden. Ahamana, 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 ahamana. <laughs> the 0 1 pitch to him. There goes Boone for third. Girardi's throw. Got it. Well, you see the game plan of the Braves. They feel like they can steal third base off of Pettit, although they can't steal second base. Boone gets a, I think his, his lead was a little too short. Watch, he's, he's going to be out by just a hair there at third base. He just didn't have a big enough lead at second base. Good job there by Brocious for the swipe tag. And Chipper pops it into foul ground. Girardi over for a look. And it's on top of the Yankee dugout. You can always steal third base off a left-hander. You can run him into the ground if you want to be aggressive. Boone actually reaches with his right hand, pulls it away, and then he tries to come in with his left hand. If he would have gone straight in with his right hand, I think he would have beat the throw. I think he would have beaten the throw if he would have gone straight in with his right hand. But again, you see Bobby Cox being aggressive. And the one two pitch is lined to center. It's in there for a hit. Williams over to cut it off and hold him to a single. That was a high cut fastball from from Pettit to Chipper Jones and Joe's coming out. Joe realizes that a two to nothing lead in a seven game series is not a lot. He wants Grimsley. And Pettit lasts just three and two thirds, gives up five runs and ten hits. Well, Chipper Jones had started to swing the bat well. He's the only Brave that had the hit in both games. Gets the slider, lines it in the left center field, and the Braves are on the attack. Someday there will be no subways or corporate ladders to climb. If retirement is a bridge to be crossed when we get there, then we must accept whatever lies ahead of us. If it is one we must build, then let us begin. I'm overseeing some deliveries for Pets.com, purely in an advisory role. I like your shorts. You're a good-looking fella. I hope they're home. Oh, wow, you cats hit the jackpot. There's enough food here to feed a lion. What goes up? Try to get it. Try to get it. Try to get the burger. Must come down. I got it. I got it. Spinning wheel round and round. Pets.com, because pets can't drive. Wow. Oh, check this out. I got involved. But this will last you two years. Guaranteed. Cool. Phillips, light bulbs that last. Advanced technology doesn't have to be complicated. That every product must be meaningful. And the end result will make you smile. Open up to Samsung Digital and keep in touch. Samsung Digital. Everyone's invited. This November, the biggest movie events are coming to NBC with the untold story seen through her eyes. Mary, Mother of Jesus. What if they're right? Y2K the movie. The network television premiere, Men in Black. And Sunday in two weeks, the magical legend of the Leprechaun. This November, the biggest movie events are on NBC. Grimsley in and a very grim Andy Pettit to the dugout. I think Andy Pettit was the victim of 
the Braves making adjustments to what happened in the first two ball games of how they were pitching them according to the scouting report and the Braves have made some adjustments. I think they would have hit Cone a little better if he was pitching tonight or even Hernandez if he would have been the third game pitcher rather than the first and second. Ball one to Brian Jordan. And this is what the Braves have wanted to do. They want to get into the pin early. They want to, you know, see their second, the Yankees' second line pitching. Two and zero. Oh. What were the odds about a year ago that Jason Grimsley would see the World Series? He was in the minor leagues in 1997 and 98, a non-roster invitee to Yankee camp this spring. Made the team, went seven and two with a good ERA, and added to the roster for the World Series. He's knocked around his whole big league career. Started with the Phillies in the late 80s. Was in the minors for a stretch, then he was with the Indians, the Angels, back in the minors, and now on the mound at Yankee Stadium in the World Series. His 2 0 pitch misses. Well, Boone was thrown out trying to steal third, Bob, but I think it was a good play. I really do. I think the Braves being aggressive tonight, showing that they're not going to just sit around and fold up their tent. Just put some pressure on the Yankees. See how they play with pressure on them. This is super slow motion. Now, I thought if he put his right hand forward, he would have been safe. You see, brings his left hand in. The swipe tag there by Brocious. It appears that it may have missed him, but I think the umpire made the proper call because it appeared that Brocious made a good, solid tag. Chipper Jones breaks, and Girardi doesn't have to throw. It's ball four. Let's take a look at the hits against Pettit this inning. Gerald Williams worked a 2 0 count, got a sinker away, and drove it over the head of Bernie Williams in center field. Then Boone gets a breaking ball, and he pulls it down the line after hitting two fastballs the other way. Chipper Jones, high cut fastball, and he finds a gap in right, left center field. So the Braves have just made some adjustments tonight, and, and Andy Pettit wasn't able to uh, keep them from swinging the bats as well as they have. I mean, they have been swinging the bats very well tonight. And we talked about that even though they only had two runs in the second and third inning, they were putting pressure on the Yankees. They were doing things. They were getting opportunities to score runs. And you see right there, they're going over the scouting report on Grimsley right, right now, Boone and, and Don Baylor. They're talking about how he pitches, what he throws on two and one pitches, what he throws to count three and one. To right-handers. They have a right-handed scouting report and one for left-handed hitters. High technology. Andrew Jones hits a little bloop back of second and Knobloch takes it. So the Braves settle for one and build their lead to 5-1 after three and a half. Now there's a Chevy Venture with flip and fold seats and a built-in entertainment system. I knew I should have taken a left turn at Albuquerque. Fun things are bound to happen when Chevy and Warner Brothers get together. Introducing the new Warner Brothers edition from Chevy Venture, the most versatile minivan ever. One quick call can help you learn more. Let's go! Own the most honored film of the year, the special limited edition of Saving Private Ryan. Winner of five Academy Awards, including Best Director Steven Spielberg. The special limited edition of Saving Private Ryan on video and DVD November 2nd. Three motorcycles passed here. Three men, two women. All carrying visa cards. Maybe can you come with I don't know that, grandfather. Because Central Law's Motorcycle Adventures doesn't take. American Express. <laughs> Central Oz will take you to a place beyond your imagination that they won't take American Express. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. 
Gemini Automotive Care, only where you see this sign. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit Fidelity.com to open an account. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Fidelity Investments, we help you invest responsibly. By 1010-220, dial it and talk up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents. And by Gatorade Thirst Quencher, helping you play longer and stronger when it counts the most. Gatorade, is it in you? Welcome back to Yankee Stadium. I'm Jim Gray. Well, it had been a very quiet Yankee dugout, but this half inning, there was a lot more chatter, a lot more enthusiasm. Guys saying, this is the inning to do it. Let's chip away. There's an awful lot of baseball left. Be patient, guys, one at a time. Over to Craig Sager with the Braves. So far, things going the way the Braves had planned. As Joe mentioned, their scouting report was excellent. Bobby Wine, along with Don Baylor and Bobby Cox, said Pettit likes to pitch away with nobody on base. Go away. Pitch hit the opposite field with men on base, look for the cutter in and pull it. Bob? Paul O'Neill checked his swing. And let's see what the ruling is here from the plate umpire Steve Ripley. Well, he's out because the ball rolls out onto the plate. Watch. He checked his swing. And, and you know, Ripley's saying the ball didn't hit him. It can hit in foul territory as long as it goes fair. It's a fair ball. Now watch, he checks his swing. The ball hits behind home plate. Sure, that's but a fair now ball, it and bounces Perez, out in front, and Perez, Perez just gonna tag him. up. Yeah, there you go. Watch the ball hit. The ball will hit right back here behind home plate. Right there, you see it hit, and Paul O'Neill stands there. Now, Perez bounces out front, grabs it before it goes foul, and you see Ripley pointing fair, and he tags him out. Out number one. Alert play by Eddie Perez. And a ball to Bernie Williams. The intense O'Neill displeased, but he has no case. It was the right call. Watching Paul O'Neill during the All-Century Team ceremony, I thought he was among the players most touched by it all. I think he has a sense of history, and I think he, he grew up in Cincinnati, and he saw Johnny Bench and Pete Rose out there, you know, guys that he idolized as a kid, and I think it was great for him. Boone throws Bernie Williams out. He said afterwards that seeing Ted Williams, and there isn't anybody who tries to hit a baseball at the major league level that doesn't have high regard for Ted Williams, that doesn't get chills when in his presence, to see Ted Williams in his 80s now and slowed by a series of strokes, helped up onto that stage by Willie Mays and Ken Griffey Jr., two different generations of fabulous center fielders. There was something about that whole scene that touched everybody. And O'Neill confessed afterwards he had tears in his eyes. Here's Chili Davis. In his 19th year in the major leagues at age 39, there's talk that this could be the end of the line for him. He says he doesn't want to play for any other team but the Yankees, and the Yankees have to make some roster decisions. Nineteen ninety one, then nineteen ninety eight. Here he is again. 1999 World Series. I guarantee he appreciated 1998 a lot more than the first one. Just because I think as the older you get, you realize I may not have another opportunity, and you take the time to smell the roses, as they say. The first time you go to the World Series, you say, well, I'll be back next year anyway. You forget how difficult it is to get to the World Series. Is that how it was for you? Very, very much so. The first one, I just thought I was supposed to be there every year, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and then after that, you realize it's tough to get back. Well, now, wait a minute. You'd started with the Astros. Right. You couldn't have gotten the idea. That was an entire Yeah, one. but the first year in Cincinnati, we uh -huh. won. The next year, we win the division again. I mean, you say, hey, it's easy. Well, it is easy. Rent Bench, Rose, Perez, Foster, you know, Sparky Anderson, all those guys. It's easy that way. And Derek Jeter's, you know, it's like his first four years. This is his third time being in the World Series. 
He thinks it's easy. Fly ball to shallow right. Jordan comes in to take it. And when you run down the lineup of the Big Red Machine, don't leave out a back-to-back -back MVP and a Hall of Famer named Joe Morgan. Yeah, let me get this straight. Yes. Are you actually saying I don't have to pay you a separate commission every time I trade a stock? Exactly. I, I'd pay an annual fee instead. Right. Is, is anyone getting this? If we this? don't pay you a commission every time we trade, what's your motivation? It's just like always, in your best interest. <laughs> Could you just explain it again? Maybe what it is is the fee is based on the value of our portfolios. So when we succeed, they succeed. Well, you'll, you'll have to be patient with us. This is all very new. <laughs> Hi, I'm Doug Flutie, pro football player and father of an autistic child. I started the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation to help less fortunate families of autistic children get the support they need. Here's a way you can help. Just dial 1010-220. All calls up to 20 minutes are only 99 cents, and 1010-220 will make a donation to the Doug Flutie Jr. Foundation every time you use it. So dial 1010-220, get up to 20 minutes for only 99 cents, and help some great kids at the same time. It's a win-win situation. Baseball isn't measured by time, it's measured by desire. The game moves toward the end, fueled by sweat and blood. And what matters then isn't how long it took to get there, but whether or not you have the stuff you need to finish it off. Five things to consider about the Chevy Impala. It's new. It starts under $20,000. It's designed, engineered, and built to be carefree. It's at your Chevy dealer now. It's received the highest frontal crash rating possible. Five stars from the federal government. The new Chevy Impala. As USA Today put it, it's a lot more car than you imagine at a lower price than you expect. The new Chevy Impala. Let's go for a drive. Big events coming to Just Shoot Me. Maya makes out with Hercules, Kevin Sorbo. Jack's ex-wife is Victoria Principal. The return of Sherry O'Terry. And will Finch leave his supermodel wife? Why, he'd have to be king of the geeks to leave her for her. Welcome back, Commander. Oh, when Just Shoot Me returns next Tuesday. David Spade in attendance tonight. How is it that guys like David Spade always get such good tickets? <laughs> Just shoot me not seen tonight because of the World Series back with an all new episode a week from tonight. Maybe if he's not using them tomorrow we can borrow them. That would be a nice gesture. <laughs> a ball to Hernandez. The DH who doubled home two in the third. So the Braves benefited by the presence of the DH at least here in game three. But you'll never convince Bobby Cox that it's a better game with the DH and Joe Torre feels the same way. Fly ball to right. Ball carrying well out there in that direction tonight. O'Neill goes to the track to take it. Once again, a shot from the Bud One airship. The Brewmasters at Budweiser remind you that fresh beer tastes better. Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball and the World Series. Bob, another reason Bobby Cox doesn't like the DH is he feels that he gets hurt because his pitchers, Glavin, Smoltz, and Maddox are better hitters than the other team can put out there. It's just a more textured game no without doubt. the DH. The National League game is chess. The American League game is checkers. Or long ball. <laughs> <laughs> Perez is struck out and lined down. That's the Jason Grims that we saw earlier in the year. He had a lot of movement and sink on his fastball. And then he went through a spell there where he couldn't get the ball down. But he really pitched well for the Yankees there at the beginning of the season. Grimsley out of that compact motion. And Perez fouls it back. Grimsley, like so many pitchers who work primarily out of the bullpen, pitches from the stretch even with nobody on base. We're in the fifth on a beautiful October night at Yankee Stadium. We lucked out on the weather for game three. 
back over Grimsley's head. Here's Knobloch from the field grasp, bounces it there, and it's an infield hit. This ball is hit right back through the middle. Knobloch does a good job to get to it, but he can't get anything on the throw. Right over the glove of Grimsley. Now watch, he catches it right there, takes an extra step. He leaps in the air, but the throw is just nothing on it. And watch, he leaps in the air. Now watch, he's off balance here as he leaps in the air. His body's still going away. He throws off his back foot. And the ball just kind of rolls towards first base. It's a hit, no question. It would no have been doubt. a spectacular play to get him, but it also illustrates that Knobloch's troubles continue. The 1997 Gold Glove winner at second base, who led the league with 26 errors this year. Hunter is singled and flied to deep right. A slow roller toward Brocious. He goes to second for one. Knobloch's relay, not in time. Although his throw was there. The ball wasn't hit hard enough to turn a double play, but at least they get the lead runner. Watch this, a chopper. Brocious has to come get it. Brocious does a great job of getting the ball at second base. Knobloch takes the low throw, gets rid of it, goes over the sliding Perez. But the throw to first base not in time. Brocious comes to get it. You have to go get it if the ball's not hit hard. Knobloch fires it over and avoids the sliding Perez, but not in time at first base. Here's Weiss switching around to the left side. He's grounded out twice. Ball one to him. The one thing you have to be careful of if you are the Braves, you have a five to one lead. Glavin's pitching well but you do not know how long he's going to stay in this ball game. The point is, I think you need to try to scratch out a few more runs to be safe here, because after all, you are in Yankee Stadium. The Yankees are capable of coming from behind late in the ball game, and you just do not know how long Glavin's going to be able to go because of his illness. Weiss cuts and misses. Bobby Cox told us before the game that he thought that provided Glavin was on tonight that he could go seven. Yeah. Well that's being optimistic I think but by the same token you have to remember that the, the Yankees have hit the Braves bullpen pretty sharply in the first two ball games. so I would say that again don't feel safe if you're the Atlanta Braves with this five to one lead and Weiss hits it toward the hole and through Hunter around second and stays there. They're still being aggressive. They're still swinging a bat so good. But I think you need to try to scratch out another run or two. This is their 12th hit. Fastball right in the middle of the plate. And Weiss does a good job of pulling it in the hole on the right side. Bringing up the suddenly resurgent Gerald Williams who has singled and tripled in three at-bats. And all of it started with his patience, Bob, in the first inning. He was very patient against Pettit, got a single to right field. He was very patient his next time up, well, his third time up, and he hit the ball off the center field wall. We're only in the fifth, and everyone in the Atlanta lineup has hit safely tonight. Ball one. Quite a contrast. We had six guys looking for their first base hit. Going into tonight's ball game, we had Gerald Williams, Brian Jordan, Andrew Jones, all of them looking for their first hit. Hernandez, Perez, and Hunter. A strike to Williams. When we talked to Bobby Cox today, I said, Bobby, tonight is do or die, isn't it? And he says, uh, not do or die, but we have to do something. And they have done something. They've come out and put five runs on the board. Hunter at second, Weiss at first. And with two out, the 1-1 pitch. A called strike two. In a DH game, 
Joe Torre is looking for Jason Grimsley to give him some innings here. On the other hand, this is still a manageable deficit. A base hit here starts to get out of hand. Bob, always remember if you're within one swing, meaning a grand slam can tie the ball game, you're always in the ball game. And Williams lost one to left. Curtis comes on, says I've got it, and he does. The Braves leave two. Halfway through in the Bronx. 5-1 Atlanta. Well, at least we made it halfway to Colorado. Wait a minute. You thinking what I'm thinking? Beer. And I was gonna buy the first round. First round of what? Dirt? What's the matter, guys? Lost? We're just looking for cold Coors Light, mister. How about that canteen up the street? This don't look good. Uh, grab some seats. I'll buy you a beer, too. Coors Light. Never figured it any other way. Frost Blue. Rocky Mountain Cold. Coors Light. Around these parts, you just can't make a better call. You guys still heading to Colorado? Feels like we're already there. You know, you're just about right. Elevator to lobby. <laughs> Bye, George. Contacts, $320. Treadmill, $800. Wonder Bra, $26. Facelift, $3,000. Being happy with who you are priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Happily accepted. Most everywhere. Any, any, miny, <laughs> This Christmas, everything, yes, everything, is getting blown up. From Trilon Studios comes the $200 million event of the year. Blow up. Oh, my. It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. Because you know how hard it is to get here. Because you never know what might happen. Because miracles do happen. The Olympics from Australia, only on NBC. The Yankees will send up Tino Martinez, Scott Brocious, and Chad Curtis in their half of the fifth against Tom Glavin, who's looked very sharp so far. The Yankees got an unearned run in their half of the first, and that's it. We mentioned earlier that Tino Martinez led the Yankees with 28 home runs. That would have been the top figure on only four of the 29 other clubs in the major leagues. It's a measure of how resourceful this Yankee team is. Right. They are Bronx Bombers by nickname only, at least in 98 and 99. But they have been baseball's best team over the last couple of years. Looking for their third world title in a four year span and their 25th world championship since the 1920s. Brett Boone throws Martinez out. And in just under three weeks, NBC is proud to bring you the inaugural NASCAR Pennzoil 400 as the season nears its conclusion. Dale Jarrett holds on to the lead in the race for the Drivers' Championship. Like Jarrett, his closest pursuers, Bobby Labonte and Mark Martin, are looking to win their first NASCAR points titles, too. Tune in Sunday, November 14th, as all the NASCAR heroes, including Jeff Gordon and Dale Earnhardt, take it to the Miami Homestead Speedway for the first ever NASCAR Pennzoil 400, only on NBC. I'm sure Bobby Cox will be watching that. He's a big NASCAR fan. Huge. When we're in there at game five, remember you had NASCAR on this television set up there we were yeah. watching. Shea Stadium during the LCS. 
A ball and a strike to Brocious, whose fly out to center in the second brought his lifetime World Series batting average beneath 500. <laughs> He's now 13 for 27 <laughs> in seven World Series games. To qualify for the all time list, you have to have 40 World Series at bats. The highest ever World Series batting average belongs to the Yankee infielder of the DiMaggio days, Bobby Brown. Yeah, American League president. Yep, Bobby Dr. Brown. Bobby Brown, cardiologist in Fort Worth, Texas for a long time. 439. Lifetime World Series hitter, Paul Molitor, and the Cardinals Pepper Martin are next at 418. The thing is, when you're batting around 500, that average can plummet if you go over three. <laughs> <laughs> it's a hard average to maintain. There's the list. And Hal McRae of the Royals in there. The 2 2 pitch. Did he go? Yep, he's gone. Well, he tried to check his swing, but watch the barrel of the bat, and he, he brings it back with his wrist. Watch it go out. See the barrel, and then he brings it back. So he did go too far. Watch, watch the barrel again. Right there, and then he brings it back with his hands. And Bobby Cox is helping him out, and Pat Corrales is sitting there, Leo Mazzoni. They're all helping Steve Ripley out, but they got the call correct. Curtis swings on the first pitch, drives one to deep right. This ball is gone. An opposite field home run by Chad Curtis. The ball is just zooming out of here to right and right center. Exactly. This pitch is up, though. This is not what Tom Glavin was trying to do. And he gets this ball up. See, it's up, and Chad Curtis hits it, and the ball is carrying very well to right field. And that one doesn't come back. And the Yankees get one swing closer. A ball to Girardi. Here is something that should be a concern to Bobby Cox. His team has five runs on right. 12 hits. They've left eight men on base. The Yankees have two runs on three hits, and their first run was unearned. Now Girardi spanks one toward left center field. It drops. If you're Bobby Cox, my concern is really not what the Yankees are doing right now. My concern is how does Tom Glavin feel? See a couple of pitches up again. He's normally down in the strike zone. The first two at batters here, he got a sinker down away, a ground ball at second base, and a sinker down away. He struck out Brocious. But here he gets one pitch up. Chad Curtis hits it in the right field seats. He gets another pitch up, and Girardi finds a little gap in left center field. If Tom Glavin is feeling well, that 5-2 to two lead is enough. But if he's not, and you're going to have to get in the bullpen soon, then that's a different concern. Let's check with Craig. You're right. We mentioned how he had a great control in the warm-up, but the thing is stamina. He lost seven pounds during the flu. He gained three of them back, but he still is not at full strength. Thanks, Craig. Here's Nabla taking a strike. And that seven innings that Bobby Cox is looking for, I mean, that's optimistic. You know, to think that a guy coming off of the, you know, the flu can give you that many. And, and, and Glavin has done a good job tonight to keep his pitch count down. So he's actually pitching his ball as well as he can, considering he's not throwing as many pitches as the Yankees would like to have him throw. Knobloch bounces it back to Glavin. The Yankees have to content themselves with one on Chad Curtis's homer here in the fifth. What would you do with a crystal face hand polished to withstand two tons of unadulterated pressure? What would you do with a tachymetric scale so precise it can survive 240 degree heat? What would you do with the world renowned Alpha Expedition timepiece? Well, you'd probably just use it to tell time. And at $6,500, that watch could cost you over $30,000 in retirement savings. We just thought you should know. Ask a financial advisor about Sun America, the retirement specialist. 
Want to color your gray beard or mustache and look natural? Get Just For Men Gel. You look so natural, no one can tell. With Just For Men Gel. Brush in and in five minutes, gray is gone. No one can tell. With Just For Men Gel. Hello, I'm Mark John Jeffries, and I'm here to talk with you about People PC. It's simple. One, a new brand name PC replaced every three years. Two, unlimited internet. Three, in-home service. Yep, if all else fails, they come to you. Four, great deals on stuff you like from places you know. All for $24.95 a month. That's it. We've been struggling at the plate, but there's a nice breeze blowing out towards right field. From spring to fall, you can feel it in the air. From the sunshine leagues of Florida to the farmlands of the prairies. From the schoolyards of New York to the golden fields of California, it's allergy season. That's why there's Claritin, the number one prescribed antihistamine in America. Talk to your doctor about Claritin, and when the umpire yells, play ball, you'll be ready. Claritin, the official allergy medication of Major League Baseball. Claritin has a low occurrence of side effects such as headache, drowsiness, fatigue, and dry mouth. Similar to Sugar Bell. NBC Sunday. Oh, no, no, no. See why more than 35 million viewers have discovered Sunday's most exciting new hit. None of this is all right, boss. When violent crime hits home. Faith. Faith. How far will she carry justice? You ain't really gonna do this. All new Third Watch after Dateline. NBC Sunday, 8, 7 Central. Five to two, Atlanta. And the question is, is that enough? Brett Boone has helped him to get that lead and here's Brett Boone in the first inning he goes the other way on a fastball away then his second time up the balls out here again he goes that way again and he gets another base hit ball really traveling well to right field now the next time up you know he's not gonna get a fastball away he gets a curveball in so he pulls it good hitting there by Boone good smart hitting he knew exactly what Pettit was gonna do to him and one of the reasons the, the, the ball is carrying so well to right field, Bobby, is when I was here early in the year, I asked him, how do we know what the wind's doing? Because a lot of the flags blow in different directions. They say if it's blowing toward that speaker in center field, that means the ball's really going to carry well to right field. And that's what it's doing tonight. Inside, 2-0. Oh. You saw that graphic a moment ago. If anyone sitting at home said, oh, I knew that already, that Frank Isbell of the 1906 <laughs> Chicago White Sox holds the World Series record with four doubles. I have only one thing to say. <laughs> You're lying. <laughs> the 2-0 in there. Let's check with Craig Sager. Well, Bobby Cox is looking for seven innings for Tom Glavin. He asked him how he felt moments ago, and Glavin said he thought he could go into the eighth inning. Cox said, well, just let me know, because I'll have Remlinger warming up. We'll stay with left-handers. Uh, good idea to stay with the left-handers. Fouled off, especially on a night like this to get some of the left-handed bats coming off the bench against righty pitching with the short porch to begin with and the way the ball's carrying, not a good idea. And we've always said that we feel that left-handed pitching is a little more stable against the, the Yankees than right-handed pitching is. Grimsley's 2-2 pitch. Full count to Boone. The brave bullpen is quiet. So it's in Glavin's hands for the moment. Boone lifts this one into shallow center field and they'll retire him for the first time tonight as Bernie Williams takes it. He gets a pitch to hit. He gets a 3-2 fastball. Looks like he gets the middle of the plate, and he, and he doesn't hit it. Look at that. Right there in the middle, he gets underneath it. And you can see that he's upset because he got it right on the good part of the bat, but he was underneath it. Look at him. <laughs> he knows he had a pitch to hit, and he missed it. Now Chipper from the left side against Grimsley. Come on. 
Let's take a look. This is a spray chart on Chipper Jones, left handed, and you see a lot of his balls go to right field. A lot of his hits and a lot of his home runs go that way. And the short porch and the wind blowing out. 2 0. Oh. Chipper has something on his mind besides game three. He was represented by Bob Farley and Van Arden, two of those who perished along with, uh, I meant to say Bob Fraley and Van Arden, two of those who perished along with Payne Stewart in yesterday's plane crash. The 3 0 pitch to Chipper is taken for a strike. And I think one of the reasons Chipper took that pitch is we've seen him swing 3 0 a lot in the postseason and swing at bad pitches and get himself out. He wants to be just a little more patient in this at bat. And he draws a walk. Well, if you're the Yankees and Chipper Jones is up, you do not want to give in to him right away. You try to throw him a little slider inside, sinker away. Another sinker away. Then you throw him a sinker over the outside part of the plate. And then you come back off the plate inside. If he wants to swing, you let him swing. But again, with the wind blowing out and the short porch in right field, doesn't add up to try to challenge him in that situation. Especially when you have three right-handers in a row coming up after him. Jordan lifts this one down the left field line. Curtis over into foul ground. No play. And he gives it back to one of the fans who still can't handle it. Bad hands, bad hands. That's now he says, hey, I got to hand it to you because you have such bad hands. I got to make sure that you have this souvenir. with an RBI single sandwiched in between a pair of walks. Takes low and outside one and one. Ned Yost flashing the signs. Glenn Hubbard is the Braves coach at first. Chipper Jones with his lead. Andrew Jones on deck. And the one one to Jordan. Fouled off. Out of the stretch, Jason Grimsley's move is so compact. I don't know of anyone who has a smaller motion when there are runners on base than Grimsley does. Just kind of steps and throws. Nothing elaborate about it at all. Chipper skips back. For the year he stole 25. With Pettit gone, the Braves might think about running. Not going, rolled foul. Let's take a look at this watch. He just steps and throws. He doesn't raise his leg up high. Just steps and throws to the plate. It's tough to get a good jump off of a pitcher that doesn't lift his leg and give you a little time to run from first base. El Duque would take his knee real high but he shortens his as well with runners and scoring on first base. One two pitch hit hard to short could be two Jeter steps on the bag and fires it to Martinez to close the Braves out in the sixth. This millennium moment is brought to you by American General Financial Group. The date was October 8th 1956. Nothing in Don's pitching past had evidenced the potentialities which blossomed so dramatically that sunny Indian summer afternoon 
before 64,519 enthralled spectators in the stadium. That's the way it was covered when Don Larson tossed his perfect World Series game. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. What is the value of victory? What makes success so sweet? At American General, we help over 12 million people every day live the lives they've imagined with retirement services, life insurance, consumer loans. And whether they have big dreams or little dreams, the real victory is seeing their dreams come true. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only where you see this sign. Thinking about hair loss? Well, now there are effective FDA-approved treatments for men's hair loss. What are you waiting for? Call your doctor today or call 1-800-MERK-12 to find out more. Merck, helping make hair loss history. Attention, please. It is exactly 50 seconds to midnight. We're almost there. in the world, a diamond. Show her you'll love her for the next thousand years. A diamond is forever. De Beers. And we'll watch the double play that gets the Yankees out of a problem here in the top of the sixth inning. Ground ball, a shortstop. The rule of thumb is if you have to take more than three steps, you go to the second baseman. He takes about five there and makes the throw. And again, he's probably trying to protect you know his teammate knowing that you know Chuck's having throwing problems he's making sure but normally the rule of thumb if you have to take more than three steps as a shortstop you flip it to the second baseman and as Jeter leads off in the bottom of the sixth here's what Jason Grimsley has given Joe Torre since he came on in the fourth two and a third innings of work no runs couple of hits couple of walks so he has had to work with runners on base but he kept it at a 5-1 game, and then it became 5-2 on Curtis's homer, which is where we stand now. Jeff Nelson up in the pen. Jeter, O'Neill, and Williams against Glavin. Ball one. Now remember, all of Hank Bauer's hits were in the World Series for the Yankees in the late 40s and 50s. Cheater, skies one to left. Gerald Williams is going to take it. From the producers of Merlin and the Odyssey. NBC, November 7th. A forbidden love leads to an epic battle to save the Earth. Leprechauns, coming to NBC one week from Sunday. That would be November 7th. Here's Paul O'Neill with one out and nobody on. We were talking about O'Neill's affinity for baseball history. One of his prized possessions, as he fouls the first one off, is a picture of himself at the old Crosley Field in Cincinnati at age six in the right field seats striking a left-handed batting pose <laughs> as Roberto Clemente patrols the outfield in the foreground. One and one. Loop 
down the left field line and in the seats. Roger Clemens is the starter for the Yankees tomorrow night. John Smoltz will oppose him for the Braves. Clemens sharp against Texas in the division series. Rocked at Fenway against the Red Sox in the LCS. Those are the combined numbers. The one two pitch. Down and away. Well, the one thing you want to do if you're Glavin is just stay away from Paul O'Neill. If he wants to pull the ball, try to, that's okay, but you do not want to give him anything that he can pull to that short porch in right field. And that's why you've seen him stay away from Paul O'Neill so far in this at bat. And O'Neill with a little tap. Perez up with it. Pegs it to Hunter for the out. And that's that good sinker away. That's that good sinker away from Paul O'Neill. And this time he grounds it out in front of the plate. He checked his swing last time up. But this is just good pitching from Tom Glavin. See, that's a sinker out away from him. And with two strikes, Paul O'Neill in kind of a defensive mode, protecting with two strikes, but just a good pitch from Tom Glavin. Paul O'Neill had the lowest batting average against left handed pitching of any regular in the major leagues this year, 190. And yet in this series, he's gotten RBI hits against Glavin and Rocker. Well, he's also a very smart hitter. I mean, he handles situation hitting probably as good as anybody in the game. I mean he knows exactly what he has to do in certain situations and you saw in this is early in this ball game. He just reached out and took the ball the other way when he had a runner in scoring position. This is a key inning that Glavin is two thirds of the way through the second third and now Bernie Williams fourth hitters in the Yankee lineup. The way this is going, they may come up only one more time in this game. Right field, Jordan to the edge of the track. Has it. Well, he got that off the end of the bat. A perfect sixth for Glavin. Still a 5-2 game. Tonight, catch Jay with baseball superstar Sammy Sosa, plus John Leguizamo, animated politics, jaywalking, and Roseanne's mega bucks offer. Then Conan's got Stephen Wright tonight. flexible car so I lease a Volkswagen Golf. It's great. I sell cappuccino machines. Sometimes I need to move big things, sometimes I have to move little things, but I always have to move. It's got dual airbags, daytime running lights, and everything fits into it. And it fits into everything. Hey! I have got to cut back on the caffeine. On the road of life, there are passengers and there are drivers. Come on, come on, boy. Come on. You want to wrestle with daddy? They go at this every weekend. I guess it's a guy thing. Come on, you. I sure hope you have a good dental plan. Yeah. We've got Delta. Huh? We've got Delta Dental. No one protects you like Delta Dental. We keep you smiling. Begonias look good. Thanks. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit Fidelity.com to open an account. 
win big. Watch Instant Replay with Fred Rogan tonight right after the game. If he hadn't gotten well tonight, his team might have been on the critical list. As it is, they've got a chance to get back in the series, Joe. 62 pitches. That's amazing to go through a Yankee lineup that takes a lot of pitches normally and works you deep into the count. And in six innings, 62 pitches. That's amazing. The Yankees, meanwhile, make a pitching change. Jason Grimsley gave Joe Torre two and a third innings of strong work. And now Jeff Nelson comes on. And maybe... The fact that Bobby Cox was looking for seven innings from Glavin is not too optimistic. There's Mike Stanton throwing in the bullpen. I think the Yankees have reached a point where they do not want to fall any farther behind either, even though you know they're always capable of coming back. You do not want to let the Atlanta Braves score another run or two here and put the game away. Andrew Jones one for three tonight still homerless in this postseason after hitting 26 of them during the regular year Nelson moves him away Nelson is an imposing figure on the mound 6'8 235 pounds almost right on top of you with that delivery whipping it in their sidearm. A right-handed hitter's nightmare when that slider is biting. It appears that he throws it right out of Scott Brocious's shirt. That's why it's so difficult for the right-hander to stay in there. Two and one the count. All of a sudden, the bats come alive for Atlanta. Not in this at bat for Jones. Brocious retires it. Scheduled after the game on most of these NBC stations, it's your late local news, followed by the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And for those of you who'd like to continue with the World Series, we'll have a postgame report on CNBC immediately following the game. The World Series postgame report on CNBC. Jose Hernandez the DH is one for three that one hit was big a double that produced two in the third a ball and a strike. Andy Pettit was gone in the fourth. His team has gotten one back to make it 5-2. One and two to Jose Hernandez. And he appears like he hurt his left hand a little bit on that swing. Watch him. This is a breaking ball away from Hernandez. Watch, he reaches out and he rolls his hand and he takes his hand off. I think he might have hurt his hand just a little bit there. Looking way down the road and the Braves remember are just trying to get back in the series tonight. But if they do and if by chance there's a seventh game. Down goes Hernandez. Andy Pettit would be the scheduled Yankee starter in game seven. Now he has pitched well in his outings in the division series and in the LCS. A bad showing tonight. Does that change Joe Torre's thinking. Well I think the Braves are lucky that. Tom Glavin would be their seventh game start if it goes that way. I, I'm not sure that Joe would change his thinking on, you know, Pettit for the seventh game. I think it just depends on how the other pitchers pitch between now and the seventh game if it goes that far. Remember 96. Terrible first start. Great second start against the Braves for Pettit. The loser in a 12-1 game. Then the winner in a 1-0 classic. I don't think anyone has their pitching rotation just set in stone at this point because it depends on what happens in next this game and the next two ball games here in Yankee Stadium. A lot of changes could be made between now and the seventh game on deciding who would start that game for you. 
if we even get that far. Right. Back to Nelson. He sets them down in order in the seventh. Stretch time at the stadium. 5-2 Braves. Nortown Networks is building the new high-performance internet, and it can be whatever you want it to be. So tell us, what do you want the internet to be? Come together, right now, over me. There's nothing better than being named Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. Well, except for surfing a 20-foot face at Mavericks, or snowboarding in Telluride. And you can't forget riding in Moab or kayaking the Snake River. Okay, there may be a few things better than winning Motor Transport Utility of the Year. Ah, oh, but what the heck. We'll take it. Motor Transport Utility of the Year. The new Nissan Xterra. In the insurance business, they say persistence pays off. The book's called Be Cool About Fire Safety. Last year, I passed out about 10,000 copies to kids in Albany County. One went to a little girl who saved her family when their house caught fire. This year, I'm passing out more books. Because in this business, did I mention, persistence pays off. You're in good hands with Allstate. Mine. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by Killian's Irish Red, which reminds you one look says a lot, by Nortel Networks, how the world shares ideas, and by MasterCard. MasterCard, proud sponsor of Major League Baseball and fan of the great American pastime. The Empire State Building lit up in blue and white for the Yankees at NBC's headquarters. The GE building. Joe, didn't I tell you to turn out the lights when you left? <laughs> Man, what a what a waste. <laughs> and of course, this view provided by the Bud One airship. Budweiser delivered fresh daily from a local brewery near you. Budweiser, the official beer of Major League Baseball and the World Series. Well, this is the seventh inning, and this is what Bobby Cox is hoping to get out of Glavin. And he still looks like he's sharp. He's got a good sinker still working for him toward the outside corner. There's action now in the Brave bullpen. Gremlinger the lefty. And Springer's the righty. A strike to Chili Davis, 0 and 2. And when you look at the Yankee bench, you know, you want to stay away from Daryl Strawberry over there as a, you know, as a pinch hitter. And Ricky Lede, other than that, on the right-hand side, you have Jim Layritz capable of hitting the ball out of the ballpark. So you'd rather have a left-hander come in to relieve Glavin if you have the opportunity to do so. Waste that one, one and two. Davis, Martinez, and Brocious in the Yankee seventh. A crowd of 56,794 settling back in after the seventh inning stretch. And Davis sends the bat flying into that crowd as he goes down on strikes. This is Tom Glavin at his best. And it got somebody. We're holding our breath, but it appeared to conk a spectator. Chili Davis, one of the most pleasant men in baseball, and you can see the look 
of concern on his face as the bat sailed out of his hands and he wonders how much damage it did. That was the third strikeout of the night for Glavin. Tino Martinez is 0 for 2. He drives one to deep right, and this one is not coming back. We showed you against Paul O'Neill how Glavin was keeping the sinker away from him. Watch where this pitch is. Not exactly where he wants it. That ball gets the middle of in, and Tino Martinez turns on it, and this ballpark can't hold that fly ball. Not where Glavin was trying to throw that pitch. What was a 5-1 lead is now 5-3. Rocious fouls it into the Yankee dugout. And this is why as we talked in the fourth inning when it was five to one we said the Yankees may need some more run. I mean the Braves may need some more runs to give themselves a working margin here. Because the Yankees are always going to make a run after. Them. One and one. The homers by Martinez and Curtis, the first two in the series for the Yankees. Fly ball center field. Andrew Jones barely has to move. And we know the Yankees are capable of coming back. They've done it a lot of times. Look at that from the seventh inning on in the division series. They were three and oh and in the LCS they were 15 to five. So they're scoring a lot of runs late in the ball game scored four in games one and two so they get a chance to see a pitcher a few times get a chance to make adjustments and they've been very difficult to put away. Here's Curtis who homered his last time up. The two home runs they've hit have been on fastballs that are up and kind of in the middle of the plate and both Martinez and Chad Curtis hit the ball they hit the ball well into the right field bleachers hit up the middle to his left is Weiss from behind the bag got it but the Yankees peck away Glavin has worked the seven innings Bobby Cox hoped for and leads it 5-3 so instead of paying a separate commission every time you trade you'd pay an annual fee trade all you want all I want? Yeah, virtually unlimited. Oh, really? Remember the financial oh, plan we're working from here, Dad. The point is long-term capital appreciation. I know, I know. You just don't want you sitting by the computer all day buying and selling stocks. Yeah, yeah. Show me how I log on to your research. Oh, that's easy. Yeah, Investing that's is serious business, Dad. I promise I'll do my homework, okay? AT&T. Seven cents a minute, all day, every day. Take one of these. That'll be 25 cents. But it says here it's a nickel. Not for a couple of hours. What? Well, see, sometimes it's a nickel, but right now, it's a quarter. It's like that long-distance nickel plan where they say it's a nickel. But sometimes they charge you 25. That's right. That's where we got the idea. Is that right? Seven cents a minute, all day, every day, even to Canada with our international plan. You know, there are some stores that sell candy for one low price all day long. And people like it? Oh, they love it. Call 1-800-41-RATE to enroll. Two tickets, $28. Two hot dogs, two popcorns, and two sodas, $18. One autographed baseball, $45. Real conversation with 11-year-old son, priceless. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard. Except at all over, even Major League ballparks. Together we've celebrated birthdays and opening days. Good efforts and little losses. Moments that live once 
and forever. But what we've really celebrated is time together. Now McDonald's salutes the year-long Walt Disney World Millennium Celebration, where new memories are yet to come. Commemorate this momentous event at McDonald's with four special edition glasses. Where can you start celebrating the millennium? Did somebody say McDonald's? As New Year's approaches, we're starting to see some problems. Six, five, four. One thing's on everyone's mind. Everybody out! Oh my God. What if they're right? Y2K the movie, NBC, November 21st. Well, you can see Bobby Cox there talking to Tom Glavin, and, and he says he has a lot of trust in his pitchers. That they're going to be honest with him and tell him whether they have one more inning to go or what they can do. You see Bobby Cox trying to find with him that nod ahead may mean I think I'm okay. Uh, it's something that Bobby's going to have to decide. But he thinks that these guys are very honest with him, so he gives them the opportunity to tell them whether they're finished or not. Unlike a lot of modern managers, Bobby Cox does not do it by formula. He does it by feel. Right. Plays hunches a lot. And the key members of this team, especially the pitching staff, have been with him so long that he'll rely on what they tell him. Joe Torre got Nelson into the game in an inning that began with Andrew Jones, then Hernandez, then Perez. You've got Hunter, all right-handed hitters, well thought out by Joe. A good opportunity to keep the Braves in check while the Yankees try to rally. But I think there are big decisions to be made by the Braves because the fact that you're ahead five to three doesn't eliminate the fact that if you lose this ball game, the series is almost over. So this is still a tough situation for the Braves to decide whether to send Glavin back out there or bring someone in from the bullpen. Girardi hitting ninth is scheduled to lead off the bottom of the eighth, then Knobloch and Jeter. Called strike three. Nelson gets a fastball that tails back over the outside corner. You see it starts off the plate outside, kind of tails back. And he gets the call. And you see the Braves were ahead five to one at one time. Now it's five to three and that's well within the range of the Yankees. And it's been Grimsley and Nelson who have given the Yankees a chance once Pettit was knocked out. A ball and a strike. Rocker gets up. The reception he got during the pregame introductions was just about as rude as what he experienced at Shea Stadium. Weiss fouls it off two and two. And a chant which is somewhat less than genteel begins directed at Rocker now that some of the fans see him in the bullpen. Fans out in those bleachers in left center field overlooking the visiting bullpen are not conducting a tea party out there. Still two and two. Rocker, though, says he thrives on this stuff. Weiss stays alive. Rocker, as you know, comes tearing out of the bullpen. They open the door, and he comes charging out toward the mound. And he says, in his mind, it's like when he played high school football. And you're at home, and you break through that banner, and the whole team comes out onto the field on a Friday night. Yeah. That's the surge he gets. Yeah. 
full count to Weiss. Rocker has been known to do the following. Now, I have never seen this, but I've heard that just to get himself pumped up, sometimes while he's warming up, he lets the return throw from the catcher hit him in the chest. Mm. <laughs> this is a different sort of young man. And Weiss, skies one to left, the Chad Curtis will take care of. Game four is tomorrow night at 8 Eastern here on NBC. It's John Smoltz for the Braves. It's Roger Clemens for the Yankees. The question is, will the Yankees be going for a sweep, or are the Braves back in it entering game four? Eleven teams have come back from 2-0 to win the World Series, and additional teams have done it in other rounds of the playoffs. No team has ever come back from 3-0 to win any series at any time in baseball history. Williams is two for four. A single and a triple. Rocker doesn't seem to be going all out in the bullpen like he's coming in to start the inning. Maybe someone's going to start the inning and the first sign of trouble, Bobby Cox is going to bring him in. Big Jeff Nelson has faced five hitters. He's retired them all. That one's high. Bobby Cox, who says the guy he has modeled himself most closely after as a manager is his old Yankee manager, Ralph Houck. Cox came up to the big leagues in 1968, and the major was still the Yankee manager then. Swing and a miss, one and two. He says that Hauk was as tough as could be, but also very fair and compassionate, and had a feel for the lesser players on a team, keeping them involved and letting him know that he appreciated their contributions. That's one of Cox's strong points as well. A fly ball to left. Six up and six down against Nelson as he gives the Yankees a chance to come back to the bottom of the eighth with New York trailing by two. Okay, let's take another call for our expert. We've got Ed in Cleveland on the line. You guys are way off. That sector's trending up, and with overseas support and strong earnings, it's an obvious buy record. Ed! Uh, consumer confidence is strong. Ed! Uh, excuse me. I'm on TV. I don't care. Take out the garbage. The whole world can hear you. Take it out! I'm analyzing security! It's time for E-Trade, the number one place to invest online. This is my daddy. He's a Gemini man. He fixes cars. He can fix anything. People like my dad. He says it's because they trust him. Gemini Automotive Care. Only will you see this sign. What if your car slips off the road in Slippery Rock? Or you need the name of a mechanic in Mechanicsville? Well, if your car is insured by State Farm, just look up the local State Farm agent. Almost anywhere you travel, whether it's a big metropolis or just a little one, a good neighbor is always nearby to help. So if your car gets stolen in Thief River Falls, or you have some trouble in paradise, hey, don't worry about it. State Farm is there. Every time we eat at the Olive Garden, I pick the best dish. Last night it was their Tuscan T-bone steak. They rub it with just the right Italian herbs and spices. Oh, and you get their roasted potatoes, too. I took one bite, I knew I had a winner. the best. Olive Garden. When you're here, you're family. How come creating one document takes two printers? What genius thought of this? You send half a job to the black and white printer, half to the color machine. And you're what? A human collator? Where exactly is this office of the future we keep hearing about? These magic machines of the new millennium. The ones that deliver laser-sharp black text in stunning color, freeing you from that sick two-machine marathon you once called your work day. The Image Class series from Canon. Here's the future. Let's get to work. Critics are calling Mr. Rock and Roll absolutely electrified. There are 20,000 people. The thrilling rise of the legends behind the music revolution. A fascinating story, an energetic performance, an irresistible soundtrack. Sail will sail. 
Roll back the rug and get ready to rock. Mr. Rock and Roll, NBC Sunday. Having thrown 72 pitches through seven, Glavin will start the eighth. Well, Bobby Cox was optimistic in saying he wanted him to go seven. Glavin said he felt so good he could go eight, so he's back out there for the eighth inning. But I guarantee the first sign of trouble, Bobby's going to go to the bullpen. First man Glavin faces in the eighth is Girardi, who's had two good at bats against him. He lined it deep right, a tremendous leaping catch out there by Brian Jordan. Then he singled, and he goes to the opposite field for a leadoff hit. Will Glavin's first pitch of the inning be his last? We'll see. Well, we've seen both teams do a good job of eventually adjusting. We saw Girardi go to right field. Brian Jordan made a fine catch. And then he singled to right. Now another fastball out there. He singles to right again. Good job of hitting there by Girardi. And he brings a tying run to the plate for the Yankees. Yankee bench reacting. And the Rocker one, throwing in earnest now. And one thing to remember, the Yankees never panic. They always think they have a chance of coming back. Knobloch is capable of tying the game. He hit 18 homers this year. Ball one. Meanwhile, Rivera getting ready with Brett Boone, Chipper Jones, and Brian Jordan due in the top of the ninth. Off day yesterday, Joe Torre can certainly have him throw an inning to keep this one close. Two and oh. Well, Joe's hoping that he can put some numbers on the board and he'll come in to close out the ninth. That's probably part of his thinking right now, not just to hold it close. He feels that the eighth inning has been the Yankees inning, and they have an opportunity to get back in this game or at least tie it here in the eighth inning. In the air to right, Jordan going back to the track, to the wall! And he cannot come up with it. It's a tie ball game. A home run by about half an inch. Well, we talked about decisions you have to make as a manager. And here we see the ball traveling well to right field. It actually hits, looks like it hit off of his glove maybe, but he had such a bad angle to get to it that the ball bounces off and goes into the seats. Let's take a look here. I yeah, think it, it hit the hit top it. of the wall. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it hit his glove. We'll have to take another look there. Well, he was looking in it yeah, he as if he might it, have yeah. gotten some leather on it. That ball yep. hit off his glove. Well, it but was both. Yeah, it, it hit, it hit his glove position. and then hit the top of the wall. Such an awkward position for Jordan to make the catch on. He tries right there and it hits off of his glove and he can't bring it back. Glavin's gone. Knobloch celebrating. The game is tied. As you might expect, Teller and I don't see eye to eye on investing. I like to avoid risk. Teller is a little more daring. We do, however, share the same new way to trade online. Introducing Power Street by Fidelity, the first site with trading tools customized by Lycos to fit your life, your goals, your unique way of doing things. Look, the market's up, or in your case, down. Power Street Online Trading. Call or visit Fidelity.com to open an account. Nobody does it like you. He lives on the carpet. You want it to be clean. Hoover Wind Tunnel reaches deep down to pick up more dirt than any other clean air upright or canister. Hoover. Deep down, you want Hoover. Stop it! Need brakes? Ah! Now during the Midas $40 lifetime brakes rebate, save $20 per axle or $40 for your whole car. Lifetime guarantee $40 in savings right now. Go safely. Go Midas. 
so beautiful to me you are so beautiful Trying to make the major leagues? Log on to MajorLeagueBaseball.com to reach the major leagues every day. Video highlights on demand. Live game audio. Get comprehensive World Series coverage and order your official clubhouse cap and tee. MajorLeagueBaseball.com lets you be a part of the major leagues, and it may even help your game. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be retransmitted in any form. The accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Five runs were not enough to hold off the Yankees. They were ahead five to one. The ball has been carrying very, very well the right field. Now watch Jordan Leach. He gets a glove on it, but he can't bring it back in the park. Watch this. It hits off the left side of his glove right there and he's not able to bring it back I think when he hit the I think his glove hit the railing and kept him from closing the glove and on the first inning he missed the ball but this was a much tougher play right here and his glove I think hits the wall and that kept him from closing his glove and bringing it back in but the Yankees are an experienced ball club and they just never panic so now Cox and Mazzoni regretting the decision to allow Glavin to come out for the eighth. He threw seven innings plus, allowed seven hits, but three of them went for the distance. So Rocker comes into a tie game to face Jeter, O'Neill, Williams. And he gets ahead of Derek 0-2. Well, Bobby, it's very demoralizing when you have a 5-1 to one lead and they keep pecking away at you and finally catch you in the eighth inning and now you're in a situation if they score one run you know you're going to be looking at Rivera. He fists one in the shallow center and it drops for a hit. Well the Yankees you know they put the ball in play with two strikes. This is a good pitch by Rocker and you can see all he did was fight it off but he's strong enough you see there he just shortens his arm pulls him in and fights it off and he gets enough of it because he's strong enough he gets it over the infield. Now if you're Joe Torre what do you do do you let Paul O'Neill go ahead and swing away or do you maybe take a chance and try to butt the winning run to second base. That one hit that you saw in game one on the screen a moment ago was a two run single through a drawn in infield against Rocker. He looks to bunt and he pops it up. Good Hunter lets there. it drop so he can erase Jeter. O'Neill wasn't running hard and they get the double play. Now that was a rare mental error on the part of Paul O'Neill. A nice play at first base by Hunter. He realizes that O'Neill wasn't running. Now watch this. He'll realize he sees the ball in there, so he comes in. He sees O'Neill not running. He lets it bounce. Rocker's helping him. Now he fires to second. He knows he's got one, and the return throw to the second baseman is in time for a double play. See, O'Neill didn't run. Now he realizes that he's going to drop it, and you can throw. The only time you can drop a ball intentionally on the infield is on a bunt. If that's a pop-up, you can't drop the ball. 
That would have been a good play even had O'Neill been running hard because you erase the superior runner Derek Jeter. Exactly. They got a bonus when O'Neill went in the brain lock for a moment and they get the double play. Bernie Williams. I thought Torrey might, you know, go ahead and bun in that situation just to try to put more pressure on the Braves by putting the go-ahead run at second base. That's a strike. Again with Bernie Williams up there in the ball carrying so well to right field John Rocker has to make a decision where he's going to try to come in on him or stay away. It's tough to pitch him away with the ball carrying so well to right field. So he throws him some off speed stuff to make him pull the ball if anything happens. Good curveball from Rocker it actually starts in the strike zone and breaks out. There you see it. It's a ball by the time it gets to the plate but it's a good pitch. Rocker has a very good curve to go with an overpowering fastball. Perez called for a fastball away. Rocker said no. And now he's saying let's start over again. And now he wants to talk with Perez. Yeah. I'm thinking that Rocker's feeling that if he goes away and Bernie Williams gets the ball up towards right field that this ballpark won't hold it. But he says OK to whatever Perez told him when he went out there. And I think it's important that they both get on the same wavelength in this situation. Because one swing or the bat and this ball game can be basically over because Rivera is ready. Center field, Andrew Jones. The eighth is history, but the Yankees tie it on Knobloch's home run. On to the ninth. How do you balance what you want and what you need? At American General Financial Group, our 8,000 consumer loan specialists are here to help. For little things, for big things. Come to us, or we'll come to you. Over a cup of coffee, or even over the phone. We'll help you live the life you've imagined. American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. Enjoy the power and beauty of your youth. Don't worry about the future. Sing. Finally, a minivan to live by. Introducing the all-new Mazda MPV. at CNBC.com. Profit from it. Hi, everybody. Fred Rogan with Eric Keros, live in our Burbank studios, and we are getting ready to make you a winner. The first two nights, we've given away over $16,000 worth of prizes. Tonight, I've personally come up with a few of the questions for the show. And you know what? If that's not enough reason to watch, if you have the four lucky numbers, we have $1 million for you, and we love to give that away. Plus, we'll have more on the Pete Rose controversy. You'll hear the apology. 
and keep watching and get ready to win. You better believe it. We'll see you right after the game with instant replay. It's a good one heading into the ninth. The score is tied. See you right afterwards. NBC's coverage of the 1999 World Series is brought to you by American General Financial Group. Live the life you've imagined. By Brewery Fresh Budweiser, official beer of Major League Baseball. This Bud's for you. And by Lexmark and their passion for printing ideas. Well, John Rocker helps his first baseman out right here. See, he sees it. O'Neill's not running right there. He says, drop it, drop it, drop it. And Brian Hunter... And he get on the same wavelength, they drop it, and then when he comes into the dugout, you see he's all excited. He's trying to pump his teammates up. And he does a pretty good job of showing that he's in, his intensity level is high. Mariano Rivera out of the bullpen in a tie game. He didn't work in game two. Yesterday was an off day, so he could throw a couple of innings here. Well, the point is you, you're not going to get a save in this situation if you're Rivera, you're not going to have an opportunity to in a tie ball game, and you're at home. So if you're Joe Torre, you want to hold the team right here and give your team a chance to come out and win it in the bottom of the ninth. That's why you send Rivera out there right now. You just want him to hold it right where it is, and you guys get back in with everything on your side in the bottom of the ninth. So Torre calls on a guy who has given up exactly one run since July 16th since he blew a save in this ballpark against the Braves. And you see Girardi working him right there. He stood way up above the strike zone. He wanted that high fastball, and he got it, but Boone, pretty good fast, high fastball hitter, got a piece of it anyway to foul it back. In this postseason, Rivera is 1-0 with five saves through nine scoreless innings. Boone takes him the opposite way for his fourth hit of the night. You've got to give this guy a lot of credit because, I mean, he has showed us a lot of discipline tonight. Hasn't tried to do too much. He's just gone the other way. This is that cut fastball away from Rivera. See it cut, and he just slaps it the other way for a base hit. That's good hitting. A lot of times in the past, Boone with two strikes, he wouldn't cut down on his swing. But, I mean, I, you've seen a guy really at the top of his game today. Tonight, I should say. And now you're going to see Otis Nixon come in. Not a bad move. I think it's a great move because Rivera, like most stoppers, do not have a good pickoff move. You know, they relax a little bit into their own mode, and you get an opportunity to steal a base here if you're at the Braves. And down goes Brett Boone doing a Karnak-like pratfall over the top step. He's okay. But here's the, here's the point here, Bob. If you're going to steal a base, you try to steal it early so that if you do steal the base, you give Chipper Jones a chance to pull the ball to the right side and move you over to third base with less than two outs. <laughs> Chipper's one for three with a walk and an RBI ground out. Ball one to him in 44 innings of postseason pitching in his still young career. Mariano Rivera has allowed two earned runs. Nixon had him timed pretty well there, but I don't think he could believe the good jump that he had, so he didn't go. He yeah. goes. Yeah. Here's Girardi's throw. They got him. Good play by Girardi to get it down there. The ball bounced, but it was right on target. That was the key. He had it right on target. See, Nixon, you can see him going. You can see him reading Rivera. He looks in. Now watch this ball. It bounces right on target. Right there. So it bounces, but it's right on the left side of the bag, on the right side of the bag. And all Jeter has to do is tag him right there. Look at that. Perfect. And strike one to Chipper. Two balls and a strike. I think if you're Nixon, you do the right thing. You have to try to steal that base so that if, you know, Chipper gets a chance to pull the ball to the right side. I mean, that's why they put him at first base, to try to steal the base. And he gave it his best shot. 
The 3-1 pitch. Jones can't catch up with it. And he just keeps burying that cut fastball in on the left-handers and away on the right-handers. The 3-2 struck him out. How good is this guy? I mean, he is just magnificent. I mean, here he goes with a little sinker. He turns this one over to Chipper Jones. He's throwing him all different kinds of pitches. What did he do? Come with a sinker on three and two. You see the movement, late movement on that ball. Girardi has to catch it just before it hits the ground. So this guy has all kind of weapons to attack a hitter with. Brian Jordan takes a ball. Scheduled hitters, bottom of the ninth. Chili Davis, Tino Martinez, Scott Brocious. Foul down the right field line. And into the upper deck. Well, I think if you're the Braves, you're going to have to leave Rocker out there. I don't think you can bring anyone else in at this point. Even if you do not score here in the top of the ninth. Up and in, two and one. There's no action in the Atlanta bullpen, so it's Rocker and Rivera, at least for now. And the 2 1 pitch is bounced to short. Nice hop for Jeter. To the bottom of the ninth we go at Yankee Stadium. Girardi's reaction as he nails Nixon. She's sweet and funny. And just look at her. What's the catch? Well, she's really into opera. And uh, she loves chess. She speaks mostly Danish. Sorry? Uh, Danish. Let's go to Danish. Do you think Notre Dame has a website? Larry, focus. Yeah, Jag Hitter, Larry. Open no, bolt. not like that. O P E R. Go to Madam Madam Butterfly. Yeah. Play a game of chess. Let's play a game. This is the most important case. Hi. Um. Dallas Medina. How about those Fighting Irish? You're a Notre Dame fan. Snap.com. Small business software, $400. Letterhead, $610. Office supplies, $90. Remembering who you work for, priceless. MasterCard Business Bonuses lets you earn miles good on any airline, no blackouts. There are some things money can't buy. For everything else, there's MasterCard Business Card. Purple, yellow, blue, orange. I sell paint. Painting, it is the most inexpensive way to redecorate your home. You can match your eyes with your wall. We have a color spectrometer and we can get any color you need. Maybe a, a brick red, a hunter green, a white. It's not rocket science. Make old look new, make new look old. We've got all the brands, the know-how. It's why more people buy paint from us than any other store in America. His daddy was a NASCAR champion. He's been a champion seven times over. Now his son's a NASCAR champ. Dale Earnhardt and his son, Dale Jr. Just two of the real American heroes taking the green flag this November when NASCAR comes to NBC. New second baseman for Atlanta, Brett Boone, after a four for five night, went out as Otis Nixon came in to run for him. Keith Lockhart takes Boone's place in the field. <laughs> and 
at age 39, the book on Chili Davis is that he's lost some bat speed. You wonder if he can turn the dial up enough to catch up with the heat of John Rocker. Well, I wouldn't put it past him. He's also a very intelligent hitter. Here we go in the last of the night. Ball one. The next run, certainly if it's scored by the Yankees, likely if it's scored by the Braves, determines whether we're on the verge of a sweep or whether it's a series again. The 2-0 pitch in there. and confident Yankee bench. They never panic. They just seem to know exactly what they want to do and how to do it. Two and two to Chili Davis. New York has climbed back out of a 5-1 hole to a tie game in the ninth. Knobloch finished that job with a two-run homer that evened it at five in the last half of the eighth. And Davis goes down swinging, and Rocker did throw the fastball by him. Antino Martinez can hit the ball out of this ballpark, especially if you get it middle in, as Tom Glavin did. That really put the Yankees back within striking distance. That made it a 5-3 to three ball game. And that was in the seventh inning. They were able to tie it in the eighth. The ball Chuck Knobloch hit to tie the game would not have been out of most parks and likely would not have been out of this park on most nights. But the way the ball was carrying to right field, it made it literally by inches. Ball one to Martinez. A chant of Tino, Tino at Yankee Stadium. Scott Brocious is on deck. And the 1 0 pitch. Two balls and no strikes. Well, John Rocker kind of looked in a little bit after this pitch. He thought it might catch the corner, but it looks like it's off the plate as you see Perez bring it back in. But he's doing right trying to stay away from Tino, especially now that he's behind in the count. Dangerous pitch for him. He gets the called strike. The 2-1 to Martinez. Three balls and a strike. Is, is he looking now for specifically a pitch he can drive out of the park? Well, I would think so. You're looking for something middle of the plate in that you know if you can get it up in the air toward right field, it might go. And since you're ahead in the count, you have a couple of pitches to play with. He pops it up. Chipper Jones backpedaling a third. Into foul ground to take it. Well, he got a fastball out over the plate. Pretty good pitch there from Rocker because it had good velocity on it. Tino was not able to pull it. Here it is, a fastball away. And it's running away. See, he hits it toward the end of the bat. He wasn't able to bring it back. And that's tough to do if you're a left-handed hitter off a of Rocker. Chipper Jones about to make the catch. 
and something comes flying out of the stands at him. Luckily, it didn't strike him. The question is, make, you hope the umpire saw that if, you know, if he would have dropped it or something. Yeah, because the ump could rule it and out. Yes. Have to be very careful with Scott Brocious. He's a good fastball hitter, and if he can get ahead in the count, he usually takes a shot at it. 0 for 3 tonight. Strike one. Real good fastball right there from Rocker. If Rocker gets out of the ninth, it's Andrew Jones, Jose Hernandez, Eddie Perez in the Atlanta 10th. One and one. For the year, Brocious had 17 homers. He hit a couple in the ALCS against the Red Sox. He bloops this one out towards short. Weiss squeezes it and will play extra innings. Which will bring you after these words from your local stations. When NBC Tuesday returns next week after baseball, here's what's coming up. On Just Shoot Me, guest stars like Hercules Kevin Sorbo, Victoria Principal, and the return of Sherry O'Terry. Smack up, T smack. There's Third Rock's big 100th episode. People say, the older you get, the slower you move. But maybe the slower you move, the older you get. The BMW 5 Series. Looking for a wireless phone is enough to make your head spin. Analog. PCS, calling areas, night minutes, weekend minutes. Then I went to Circuit City. They helped me find a great phone and the perfect rate plan. Right now, you'll get a $40 Circuit City gift card free with any wireless phone purchase. And you'll get a free 900 megahertz cordless phone when you buy select Nokia phones, a $30 value. Let Circuit City clear the air on wireless phones today. With AT&T Digital One Rate, this is no ordinary phone. It's my you-can-reach-me-in-Austin, then Denver, then Philly phone. My hey-let-me-pick-up-the-kids-today phone. My I'm working from home today phone. My hey-honey-Michael-made-black-bell phone. The world of wireless has changed. AT&T Digital One Rate. No roaming or long-distance charges across all 50 states. So now AT&T could make your wireless phone your only phone. There's nothing better than being named Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. Well, except for surfing a 20-foot face at Mavericks. Or snowboarding in Telluride. And you can't forget riding in Moab. Or kayaking the Snake River. Okay, there may be a few things better than winning Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. Ah, oh, but what the heck. We'll take it. Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. The new Nissan Xterra. Andrew Jones, who's one for four, will face him. The second of the two home runs allowed this season by Mariano Rivera was hit by Andrew Jones in this ballpark in July. Strike one. Here it is on July 16th. That's the last time Rivera blew a save. High fastball up around his neck. He tomahawks it out of the park. Back live, hits one toward the middle. Knob lock from the grass. Good throw. Andrew Jones likes the ball middle of the plate in. That's the home run he hit off of Rivera. He gets this ball away, you see. He hits it hard, though. Good swing there by Jones. He hits it to the second baseman, and he throws him out at first base. The DH's spot comes up now, and so does Ozzy Guillen to bat for Jose Hernandez. So Guillen can stay in the game as the DH. And Guillen has proven that he can turn on the fastballs. He hit, had the best at bats against Armando Benitez of the Mets. 
in the LCS. And I'm sure he thinks that he can handle Rivera's fastball too. It's not just to handle Rivera's speed on his fastball. He has that little cut fastball and it's such a late break. You know it just moves in on you if you're a left handed hitter and moves away if you're a right handed hitter. It's not like a slider where you can read it. It's a cut fastball with you can't even see the rotation. And Rivera gets ahead 0 and 2 while well, we have a chance. Here's a report. On the boy who was hit on the head. By the bat that slipped out of Chili Davis's hand as he struck out on the seventh. A nine year old boy was hit on the forehead. He was taken to the first aid room here at Yankee Stadium. He was able to walk and talk. He never lost consciousness. No bleeding but a large welt on his forehead. So they took him to the hospital to be examined as a precautionary measure. We're told he had the bat with him in the ambulance as they drove him off. One and two. in his eyes and he fouls it back. Remlinger getting ready. Quite possible that he'll be in for Rocker in the bottom half of this inning. I don't think there's any doubt that he's going to take Rocker out for a couple of reasons. One, you know, he's thrown two innings and if the Braves can score a run or win this ball game, they're going to need Rocker the rest of the way. Let's go to Craig. It appears there'll be a double switch because Ryan Klesko is on deck and then Greg Myers is ready to catch for Eddie Perez. Roll to first and foul. Another good pitch there by Rivera. That one started on the inside corner and then moved off. And that's why it's just so difficult. He keeps the ball off the big part of the bat. Look at this. Starts it. Over the plate, see where it ends up. You see Girardi reaching way inside. Watch this. Look at that. I mean, in the left hand hitter, the best you can do is pull it foul and get yourself another swing, which is what Ozzy Guillen did. One out, nobody on the one two pitch. Struck him out with high heat. Well, again, it proven that he could get to the fastball. So what does Rivera do? Throw it up and out of the strike zone. Look at this. Way up, you can't get to that one. He had been fouling off the good pitches. So Rivera just throws one a little higher than he can reach. So here comes Ryan Klesko. A threat, especially in this ballpark. 21 homers for the year. Inside ball one. The Yankees have pitched Klesko inside the entire series so you can expect you know Rivera to throw in off the plate too. They don't want him to get something out over the plate where he can extend on. He pops it up. Girardi off with the mask back near the screen. No play. The tough thing for a left handed hitter against Rivera is that fastball starts on the inside corner and it looks pretty good. But by the time you start to it and it jumps at you it's almost impossible to keep it fair. One one pitch broken bat knob block a leaping attempt but he can't get it. There it is you get he got a break because there's that cut fastball inside just jams him, shatters his bat but he gets enough of it to get the ball over the infield to watch he takes a big swing but look at that he just can't get to it but he gets enough of it that it's a base hit in the right field so Kles goes at first and now Brian Hunter is called back and Greg Myers will bat for him so in the bottom of the tenth Myers will catch with Perez out and Klesko will become the first baseman with Hunter out. But you have the lesser glove man at first in Klesko. Well, if you're Bobby Cox, <laughs> you have to score a run. That's your main objective right now is to score a run. 
you've lost all your opportunity to just play defense in this ball game. Myers had a couple of hits in game two, which he started. Nubbed foul, 0-2. The thing about Rivera is that, I mean, he just seems to never make a mistake with that cut fastball. I mean, he always gets it exactly where he wants. He starts it right on that inside corner to the left-handers and moves off. If you're a right-handed hitter, he starts it right on the outside corner and moves off. I mean, he just does not make any mistakes with that pitch. He never leaves it out over the plate. Here's the 0-2. Myers checks his swing. Mariano Rivera. Well, let's take a look at this 0-2 pitch. Well, he's got two strikes. He tries to get Myers to chase that pitch that Ozzie Guillen struck out on. He doesn't do so. Well, he finally left one over the plate. Now watch this pitch. This is the first pitch since he's been in the ball game that he left in the middle of the plate. Watch where it is. It's a cut fastball, but it's right there. And Myers misses it, probably because he had two strikes and he's protecting a little bit. Another 1-2 pitch. Hit toward the hole. Martinez to his right to pick it up and step on the bag. To the bottom of the 10. Was capture the hopelessness of modern life. There's no vases, no fruit, it's just quiet. It's permanent, but yet expansive. It's the same here as it is from here. In fact, it's me. You ran out of paint and the art store wouldn't take a check again, right? Right. Consider the Visa check card instead of checks or cash. It's fast, easy, and accepted everywhere Visa is, so you can get what you need. What I was trying to do here and get on with life. Capture the People, you can come out now. Look, I've got the wireless internet right here in my hand. No wires, no tricks. There's news, sports, even Yahoo. And crystal clear calls, all right here. Let's print PCS. That's right. Come on out. Welcome back to the world. Introducing the Sprint PCS Wireless Web. Burger King has added a new word to the English language, craveable. Craveable, adjective, as in the craveable new chicken club sandwich is here to stay at Burger King. See, the chicken club has all white meat chicken, crispy bacon, and lettuce and tomato. So at first we called it delicious, but that didn't work. Tasty? Not good enough, but craveable just seemed to fit. The dictionary people didn't like it. I'm sorry, craveable is not a real word. But folks still seem to be warming up to our chicken club. Burger King, have it your way. NBC Sunday. See why more than 35 million viewers have discovered Sunday's most exciting new hit. None of this is all right, boss. When violent crime hits home. Faith. Faith. How far will she carry justice? You ain't really gonna do this. All new Third Watch after Dateline, NBC Sunday, 8, 7 Central. Rockers done. Remlinger's in. 10 and 1 for the regular season. There are his numbers in the playoffs and World Series. A 33-year-old Dartmouth graduate. And this is a huge inning of work. Obviously, everyone is in extra innings. But Mariano Rivera has not thrown more than two innings at any time this year. Joe Torre has used him for two innings several times, but never beyond that. And so, if Remlinger can get the Yankees out in the 10th, the invincible Rivera is gone. And not that Ramiro Mendoza is any slouch, but they'd have a chance against him in the 11th. No doubt that both teams are looking at it that way. I'm sure Joe Torre is saying, hey, we got Rocker out of there. This is our opportunity to score against Remlinger. And then it switches to Bobby Cox's side. So now you, you're going to end up with your two stoppers out of the ball game. As we see Greg Myers, the new catcher for the Braves. Ryan Klesko over at first base. 
So the pinch hitters stay in the game. And Curtis, who's one for three, but that one was a home run, leads it off in the 10th against Remlinger. Girardi on deck, and then Knobloch. Foul to the seats. Very important pitch there for Remlinger, just to get out in front. See, the one thing you have to do at this stage is you have to stay in front of the hitters if you're the visiting team, and the Yankees have a chance of winning the ball game with one run. You have to stay in front. You pitch from behind, and you're going to get hurt. Curtis hit 262 for the year with five home runs. Remlinger's 0-1 pitch is high. Bobby's had to make some tough decisions in this ball game, and I think the toughest one was to, whether to leave Tom Glavin in to start the eighth inning or not when he had a two-run lead. That was a very difficult decision to make. In the air to left. It's deep. It's very deep. It's 3-0 Yankees in the series. They'll have the brooms at the ready tomorrow night because Chad Curtis, a man who hit five home runs all year, clouded two tonight. And Bob, how good are these Yankees? I mean, they are just an excellent ball club. They keep coming from behind until they get you on the chopping block. Fastball, looks like it gets the middle of the plate and down, and you see Curtis knows right away that he got enough of it. That's the game winner. The Yankees have won 11 consecutive World Series games. And they're on the verge of their second straight World Series sweep, courtesy of Curtis. The man of the hour is with Jim Gray. All right. Thank you very much, Bob. Chad, tell us about that pitch. Uh, I, I can't do it. You know, as a team, we kind of decided that you know, we because uh, of what happened with Pete, we're, we're not going to talk out here on the field. I do want to say that was for you, though, Grandma. Thanks. Well, Chad, you don't want to talk about the home run? All right, Bob. Back upstairs to you. All right, Jim. Chad Curtis is the Chevrolet player of the game. His homer started the comeback from 5-1, made it 5-2. And then in the bottom of the 10th, the first and only man faced by Remlinger. He drives one over the fence and left to win it six to five. And again, this is, you have to give this entire ball club a lot of credit. Chad Curtis is the hero tonight, but there were so many other heroes. I mean, they just kept coming back. Jeff Nelson pitched great. Grayson Grimbley, they held the Braves until they were able to come back. And Chad Curtis puts the crowning touch on with this swing. And right there, he knows the game is over, and so does his Yankee teammates. And this, therefore, is the Merrill Lynch play of the game. There's a new way to work with Merrill Lynch. It's any way you want. This is the first time a World Series game has ended on a walk-off home run since game six in 1993 when Joe Carter's homer at Sky Dome won the series off Mitch Williams and the Phillies. This one puts the Yankees at the brink of victory, up 3-0 in the series. The Braves had their chance tonight. Glavin was working on a fine ball game and had a 5-1 lead. They could not hold it. So in 10 innings, the final score, the Yankees six and the Braves five. Tomorrow night at 8 Eastern, we're back here in the Bronx 
Game four. Clemens against Smoltz. Tonight, after your late local news, it's the Tonight Show with Jay Leno. Tonight, Sammy Sosa is on the show, along with the music of Third Eye Blind. And for those of you who would like to continue with World Series coverage, tune to CNBC right now for the post-game report. For Joe Morgan, Jim Gray, and Craig Sager, I'm Bob Costas. This is NBC, home of the 1999 World Series and from Yankee Stadium. Good night, everybody. November 6th, Belmont Stakes winner Lemon Drop Kid takes on America's number one ranked thoroughbred, Barons, in the Breeders' Cup Classic. Just one of eight championship races on racing's richest day. Live from famed Gulfstream Park, the 16th running of the Breeders' Cup, November 6th on NBC. You know, people still ask me about the crash. I'm tired of talking about the crash. I mean, first of all, it wasn't even really a crash. 1929. That was a crash. Yeah, that was bad. Maybe it was more like a market correction. Typically defined by like 10, 20% drop in the Dow Jones Industrial Average, which we consider the economic factors that are affecting the current risk premiums. When we created a smarter kind of investment firm. Guess it's not that surprising. We created a smarter kind of investor. What do you know about expense ratios? An expense ratio is a percentage. The rugged Montana from Pontiac. With not one, but two sliding doors. Something handy for whoever's passing through. Life is more exciting in Montana. Did you remember the milk? With the Alaska Airlines mileage plan, your miles never expire. Think of the possibilities. Join the Alaska Airlines Mileage Plan. The San Ramos Hotel. Embrace the elegance. Experience the luxury. Savor the beauty. Dodge the debris. Seems the hotel wasn't designed to handle a sudden tremor. Who could have helped? Enjoy your vision. Later today, a brand new show. Later today. It's like today, only later. Later. Weekdays on NBC. Win big. Play instantly play with Fred Rogan next. Tonight, live. You have a chance to win $1 million within the next 30 minutes. It's Instant Replay with Fred Rogan. Hi, everybody, and welcome to night three of Instant Replay. Was that a great game or what? The Yankees coming from behind to win it in extra innings. This is the post-game show where we talk about the game, and you can watch and win. So call our toll-free phone number right now, 877-291-4444. On the internet, it's www.nbc4la.com. Now, we have given away over $16,000 in prizes already. Tonight, you could be our big winner. And if you have four lucky numbers, you could win $1 million. Now, we're going to talk with Dodger first baseman Eric Karros after our first call-in question. I gave you a hint on Sunday. The question. Which batter made the last out in the top of the first inning? Was it Brian Jordan? Eddie Perez, or Jose Hernandez. Remember the number is 877-291-4444. All right, you're on instant replay. What's your name? Uh, Janet Valencia. Janet from Valencia, how you doing? I'm fine, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you enjoy that game? <laughs> yes. You sound like you're from New York, are you? <laughs> yeah, Brooklyn. From Brooklyn. Well, I'm calling so from California. I understand that. You were from Brooklyn, <laughs> now you're in California. No matter where you're at, you're in a good mood, is that correct? Yes. All right, very good. Now, do you have the answer to our first question? I, yes. Do you need the choices again? Um, Bob, the rules guy, let's give her the choices. Yeah, yeah you give the, the choices. The choices are, who made the last out in the top of the first inning? The choices are, was it Brian Jordan, Eddie Perez, Jose Hernandez? All right, let's have it, Janet. Who um, did it? One, Brian Jordan. Was it Brian Jordan? Oh, no, Janet. Well, good try. Thanks for playing. We'll talk to you again later. All right, now you're on instant replay. What's your name? 
Are you there? Larry? Larry, how you doing? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Costa Mesa. Costa Mesa, what would you think of the game? I thought it was very good. Yeah, are you a Braves fan or a Yankees fan? Uh, I'm a Yankee fan. So then you're having a good night. Let's see if it gets any better. Who or which batter made the last out in the top of the first inning? Would you repeat it again, sir? Bob? The choices are Brian Jordan, Eddie Perez, Jose Hernandez, and Brian Jordan has already been excluded. So it's between Eddie Perez and Jose Hernandez. Who is it? Uh, it's, uh, it was uh, Jose Hernandez. Was it Jose Hernandez? There you go. Absolutely so right. the DH. Jose Hernandez, the former Cub. Hernandez swings at the 3-0, and Jeter gobbles it up. The Yankees are out of the top of the first. All right, there you go. Congratulations to you, Larry. You're a winner. And now we're going to ask you to go to the big prize board with over $11,000 worth of prizes on the board. If you would, pick a number between 1 and 9. Uh, number 5. All right, let's see what's behind number 5 for Larry from Costa Mesa. From Fisher, a 200-watt total power mini audio shelf system with multicolor display, three-disc CD player, a full Logic dual cassette deck, and three-way speakers from Fisher Audio Video. Retail value $300. Nice job, Larry. Keep in mind, the winner of the biggest prize returns at the end of the show to play our million-dollar lucky number payoff. Now, remember, pay close attention to everything that is said from here on in. You never know when we'll ask a question about it. Back with us tonight, the man who always has his hand on the buzzer, Eric Keros. Eric, thanks for being back again tonight. Good to be back here. All right, now let's talk about this ball game. You played with Chad Curtis. He was a member of the Dodgers. Let's talk about the game-winning home run off Mike Remlinger. A hard-nosed ball player. Uh, not the type of guy you think is going to get the big hit, especially in that Yankee lineup. Uh, Remlinger threw him a low fastball. He'd already hit a home run that night or la tonight. Whack. Did it again, and he knew it because you saw him throw the bat when he got it. Is there any sweeter sensation than knowing you've just hit it out to win the game? No, especially when you leave that team out there on the field and you're circling the bases and they've got to stand out there and they're walking in while you're circling the uh, bags. Yeah, it's got to be a horrible feeling for the Atlanta Braves. They had the lead in this ball game. They got to Andy Pettit early on. Brett Boone. Played very well tonight at the plate. Well, Brett Boone had the night off, and I'm sure, or the night before, and I'm sure he was a little ticked off about it. But this is a guy that had been out there all year long. Bobby Cox decides to make a lineup switch. He's out there, gets four base hits tonight, so I, I'm sure he'll be in there again. But the Yankees played great, and uh, you know, a 5-1 lead, and can't hold it. That's deflating to the Braves. Now, Tom Glavin pitched tonight. He lost seven pounds. He had a stomach virus. Comes out, pitches very well for seven innings. What would you say his toughest pitch to hit is? An outside fastball. Outside fastball. Without question. Doesn't necessarily have to be a strike. He works on the outside part of the plate and keeps moving farther and farther away. And it's tough to, to lay off that pitch. But the Yankees made him come in, and uh, you know they got to him. Uh, Girardi had that base hit, and then Knobloch hit a home run off him as well. Now, that brings us to the key play in the game because he went seven innings. He came back out there for the eighth inning. Let's pick it up here. Bottom of the eighth. Yankees down 5-3. Chuck Knobloch, fly ball deep to right. It was off Tom Glavin. He had pitched a brilliant game until this point. Off Brian Jordan's glove at the wall. Gone for a two-run homer. That tied the game at five. And I'll tell you what, that brings us to our next question. And don't forget the number to call is 877-291-4444. The question... I like that, I like that. Who was the runner on base when Knobloch hit his homer? Was it Jorge Posada, Joe Girardi, or Scott Brocious? All right, let's see. You're on instant replay. What is your name and what's your answer? Do we have anybody on the phone right now playing? Hello? Hi. Yes, hi. And what's your name? Mina. Mina? Yes. And where are you calling from? Culver City. Did you watch the game? Yes, I did. Did you enjoy the game? Yes, yeah, sure. Do you feel like a winner tonight? Uh, maybe. <laughs> All right, Mina. Who was the runner on base when Knobloch hit his homer? Okay. Who do you think it was? Bob? Uh, the choices were Jose, uh, Jorge Posada, Joe Girardi, or Scott Brocious. Three. Who was it? Uh, it's Scott Brocious. Was it Scott Brocious? No. Oh, I'm sorry, Mina. Thanks for trying. All right, we have another caller now. You're on instant replay. Yes. And what is your name? My name is Joanne. Hi, Joanne. How are you? I'm fine. Did you have a fun time watching the game tonight? Uh, yes, I did. Did you like the Yankees or the Braves? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you. Were you a Yankee or Brave fan? No, Brave fan. Oh, I'm so sorry, Joanne. Where are you calling from? From uh, Elisa Viejo. All right. Well, then, this is a very painful question for you, but let's ask it again. The runner on base when Knobloch hit 
his homer. Uh, would you put the, I <laughs> forgot the... Uh, Certainly, Jorge Posada, Joe Girardi, or Scott Brocious. And one was already answered? That's right, Scott Brocious is out. Okay, uh, one, Jorge Posada. Jorge Posada? Oh, 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 no, I'm so sorry, Joanne. I've got a feeling our next caller is going to be a winner. And our next caller on Instant Replay is who? Hello? Hi, who are you? My name is Jay. Hey, Jay, how are you doing? Pretty good, how are you? Good, now, Jay... We couldn't telegraph this anymore for you. Who was the runner on base when Knobloch hit his homer? We had three choices. Two are no longer there. Do you have the correct answer? Let's see. It's the second guy. I forget his name. <laughs> you know what? Is it the second guy you forgot his name? Yes, it is. There you go. Jay, way to go. This in the eighth is Girardi, and he goes to the opposite field for a leadoff hit. Will Glavin's first pitch of the inning be his last? We'll see. Oh, very nice, Jay. Now it's time to go to the prize board, pick a number between one and nine. Uh, how about nine? Well, let's see what's behind number nine. Jay, what do you have? Congratulations. It's Roy Hill's beautifully designed entertainment center, the perfect centerpiece for your viewing or listening pleasure. From Roy Hill, retail value $1,430. Oh, Jay. Nicely done. Remember the winner. Oh, 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 wait. The winner with the biggest prize returns at the end of the show to play our million-dollar lucky number payoff. But, Jay, did you hear that bell? Yeah. You know what that means? No. It's double or nothing time. I'm going to ask you another question, give you a chance to win another prize. If you miss the question, you'll lose everything. The good news is you'll get two possible answers to choose from. You've got a 50-50 shot. Remember, the biggest winner at the end of the show has a shot at the million bucks. Do you want to play? Uh, well, where am I at right now? What's what was the value of the price? Right now you're leading at $1,430. Larry from Costa Mesa has a stereo at $300. So you're the leader, but we've got a lot of game to play here. Jay, what do you say? We uh, need a decision. There with the, what I got. You're going to stay with what you have? Yeah. All right, Jay, congratulations. You're the leader with the entertainment center at $1,430. We congratulate you. Stay right there. We may be calling you back at the end of the program. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take it to the net. Our net address is www.nbc4la.com. This question is an internet question. All you need to do here is click onto our website, then click on to the instant replay button, and that will take you to where you need to be for this Who Am I question. The question. This Yankee belted a grand slam in game one of the 1998 World Series against the Padres. Was it Bernie Williams, Scott Brocious, or Tino Martinez. First person with the correct answer wins. Later, we'll talk to the winner and take them to the prize board. Remember, watch everything. Pay attention. You could be $1 million richer by the end of the show. Stay right there. Instant Replay is brought to you by TiVo. Now you can pause live TV and automatically record your favorite shows every time they're on. With TiVo, you run the show. People say, the older you get, the slower you move. But maybe the slower you move, the older you get. The BMW 5 Series. Looking for a wireless phone is enough to make your head spin. Analog. PCS, calling areas, night minutes, weekend minutes. Then I went to Circuit City. They helped me find a great phone and the perfect rate plan. Right now, you'll get a $40 Circuit City gift card free with any wireless phone purchase. And you'll get a free 900 megahertz cordless phone when you buy select Nokia phones, a $30 value. Let Circuit City clear the air on wireless phones today. With AT&T Digital One Rate, this is no ordinary phone. It's my you-can-reach-me-in-Austin, then Denver, then Philly phone. My hey-let-me-pick-up-the-kids-today phone. My I'm working from home today phone. My hey-honey-Michael-made-black-bell phone. The world of wireless has changed. AT&T Digital One Rate. No roaming or long-distance charges across all 50 states. So now AT&T could make your wireless phone your only phone. There's nothing better than being named Motor Trend Sport Utility of the Year. Well, except for surfing a 20-foot face at Mavericks. 
or snowboarding in Telluride. And you can't forget riding in Moab or kayaking the Snake River. Okay, there may be a few things better than winning Motor Transport Utility of the Year. Ah, but what the heck, we'll take it. Motor Transport Utility of the Year, the new Nissan Xterra. Win big. Play instantly play with Fred Rogan next. Live from the NBC studios here in Burbank, it's Instant Replay, the show where all you need to do to win is to watch. And if you've got four lucky numbers by the end of the program tonight, you could win $1 million. Now, let us welcome back Eric Karros, and I hope you have been listening. Of course, there's been much fallout from the Jim Gray-Pete Rose interview before Game 2 of the World Series on Sunday. Eric, have you had any change of heart about what happened between Jim and Pete since it occurred? Absolutely not. And Jim Gray issued an apology, but he apologized to the baseball fans and not Pete Rose. And I think that was even a bigger slap in Pete Rose's face. And I'll tell you what, I liked what Chad, that Chad Curtis home run was nice, but what he did uh, after the game with Jim Gray was, was outstanding. Well, what happened after the game is Chad Curtis hit the home run and NBC went to Jim Gray, who was interviewing the the winning team, the Yankees, and uh, Chad Curtis basically said, uh, you know, we made a decision not to talk out here on the field because of Pete, and he walked away. And I'll tell you what, for the Yankees to decide to do that, that's one thing, but to actually to be the guy that has to go through with it in Chad Curtis's situation, especially a guy like him, hitting the home run to win the game, doesn't get a lot of fanfare, comes out though and, and really sticks it right to Jim Gray and then just walks off, and I liked it. I liked it a lot. All right, well, now that interview with Pete Rose brought many phone calls and opinions. KNBC alone received hundreds of calls regarding the incident. Before the game, Jim issued an apology. Here is the text of his statement. After viewing the videotape, I can understand the reaction of many baseball fans. I thought it was important to ask Pete Rose if this was the right moment for him to make an apology. If in doing so, the interview went on too long and took some of the joy of the occasion, then I want to say to baseball fans everywhere that I am very sorry about this. Should that end this now? I don't know. I think now there's going to be there's more fuel to the fire. And like I said, with Jim Gray's apology, he never once mentions Pete Rose. And that's who he should be apologizing to because that's who he humiliated on air. And now Chad Curtis and the Yankees come back and, like I said, stick it to Jim Gray. So there's going to be a lot more about uh, as far as what goes on after the next few days. All right. Now, let me ask you something. Have you been paying attention? You think I'm going to ask Eric about something he just said? No. We're going to ask him about what he said in the first segment. A question. <laughs> Fred asked me, what, ta what is Tom Glavin's best pitch? What did I say? Is it A, a sinker, a changeup, or an outside fastball? You were sitting here watching, so you should know. All right, Viola, you're on the line. You're playing instant replay. Where are you calling from? I'm calling from Los Angeles, California. Well, very good, Viola. What did you think of the game tonight? Oh, just wonderful, but I was hurt because my brave missed it. I'm so sorry, but perhaps we can brighten your evening by awarding you a prize. Oh, thank you. Do you know what Eric said? A sinker, a changeup, or an outside fastball? Outside fastball. Was okay. it an outside fastball? What would you say his toughest pitch to hit is? An outside fastball. Outside fastball. Without question. Doesn't necessarily have to be a strike. He works on the outside part of the plate and keeps moving farther and farther away. Viola, nice job. You're off to the prize board and we'll see what you've won. So if you would be so kind, pick a number between one and nine. Uh, one and nine, let's see, uh, seven. All right, what does Viola win behind number seven? Congratulations. It's Walt Personal Care Products featuring Sweet Dream Soothing Massage System and Dental Clean Dual Action Power Toothbrush. Wall bringing quality and value home. Retail value $188.45. Good job, Viola. Thanks for playing and sleep tight tonight. As you know, the winner of the biggest prize returns at the end of the show to play the million dollar lucky number payoff. Now we find out who answered our web question. This individual, the Pooba of Point and Click. John is on the line. Hi, John. How are you? How are you doing? I'm good. Where are you calling from? Glendale. Do you have a floppy or a zip disk, please? Uh, I certainly do. Oh, well, thank you. You have both, and that's very important. The question was, <laughs> this Yankee belted a grand slam in game one of the 1998 World Series against the Padres. Was it Bernie Williams, Scott Brocious, or Tino Martinez? Tino Martinez. Absolutely right. Way to go, John. You're off to the prize board. If you would now pick a number between one and nine. One and nine. Hold on. All right. You have only nine choices, John. Thank you. It's between one number and... Number four. All right. 
Lucky number four, the big peacock. What's behind number four? Congratulations. It's two suits from the men's warehouse. With over 30 stores in L.A., it's the Southland's best choice for men's clothing and sportswear. You're going to like the way you look. The men's warehouse guarantees it. Retail value, $800. All right, the Natalie Attire John, thanks for playing. We'll have another internet question later. Already tonight, four big winners at the end of the program. One winner with four lucky numbers could win a million bucks. Do yourself a favor. Watch the TiVo commercial in this break. We want you to win. So watch carefully, and we'll be right back. Ever wish you could pause live TV? Introducing TiVo. Come with me. The game's on. I'll wait. Thanks. Now you can put whatever you're watching on hold. It's in sudden death. Then pick up where you were before you got interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just one way TiVo puts you in control. With TiVo, you run the show. The world can be a pretty tough place. Now there's one exciting car designed to take it. Grand Am. With solid form design, it's the most solid Grand Am ever built. And right now, take advantage of this solid offer. Grand Am. Excitement well built. See your local Pontiac dealer today. Tooth Fairy. You go to everyone's house? Let's just say I don't need to go to everybody's house. I brush? Right. You're missing between here, here, and here. Well, I brush there. Let's not get defensive, Mr. Pearson. You're not the problem here. Sonicare's sonic technology uses 31,000 brush strokes per minute and removes nearly twice as much plaque between teeth as a manual brush. Sonicare. You want some coffee? No, it makes me irritable. Welcome back to Instant Replay with Fred Rogan. We are indeed live. Instant Replay, the show where winning is as easy as watching. Time for another call in question. The number 877-291-4444. You got a phone, you got a finger, then why don't you reach out and touch us? Did you watch the commercials? Remember the TiVo commercial? The one in the break? Eric, take it. The question. In the TiVo commercial, what sport was a man watching on TV? Was it football, baseball, or basketball? Call now. The first caller to get through with the correct answer wins. All right. Reginald is on the phone. Reginald, where are you calling from? Reginald? Yes. Hello? Hey, where are you calling from? Compton, California. All right. All right, Reginald. Did you watch the commercial? Have you watched the whole show? Reginald, have you paid attention? Yes. Have you really paid attention? Yes. All right. Don't make me come over there, Reginald. Okay. All right. Then give me the answer to the question. What sport was the man watching on TV? Football. Was it football? Way to go, Reginald. I wish you could pause live TV. Well, congratulations. Are you ready to go to the big prize board, Reginald, and become uh, yeah. a winner? All right, pick a number between one and nine. Let's go. Okay, uh, number two. What's behind number two for Reginald? Congratulations. Oh, the Yamaha Wave Runner XL700 what? provides high performance and great styling. Yamaha produces America's favorite brand of personal watercraft, the Wave Runner. Only Wave Runner's combined performance, handling, and styling. Nothing else is a Yamaha. Retail value $5,999. Reginald! Do you know what that means? Yes. Yeah. That means you're the leader right now. Oh, wow. Is that great? Thank you, yes. You, you ever been on a Wave Runner? Uh, yes. Yeah. All right, well, you've got a new one, and I think you're going to have a chance to win a million bucks, possibly. We are going to have some other contestants, but stay there. You may be our top winner. Now okay. we go back to the net. Here's your chance to log on to NBC4LA.com to play. Here is the question. What borough is Yankee Stadium located in? Is it the Bronx, Queens, or Brooklyn? We'll talk to our winner after the break, also in our next segment. Our top winner and one other lucky contestant will have that chance to win $1 million in the lucky number payoff. We're getting ready for it. It could be you, so stay right there. Ever wish you could pause live TV? Introducing TiVo. Come with me. 
The game's on. <sighs> Thanks. Now you can put whatever you're watching on hold. It's in sudden death. Then pick up where you were before you got interrupted. Yeah. <laughs> and that's just one way TiVo puts you in control. With TiVo, you run the show. The GMC Jimmy has a full-length steel frame. A 190-horsepower Vortec engine. And tows up to 5,900 pounds. Just what the road needs. Now lease a 2,000 Jimmy for around $239 a month. Residency restrictions apply. Call for lease details. Justice to the West. My name is Wider. The law was his obsession. You got yourself a bit of a reputation, Wyatt. His family was his passion. You and your precious brothers. He risked everything he loved. I don't want to see you shot down in some street fight. It's our home, and I'm not leaving. In the legendary gunfight at the OK Corral. Now he's going to be a marshal and an outlaw. Gene Hackman, Dennis Quaid, Isabella Rossellini, and Kevin Costner. Wyatt Earp, NBC4, tonight. Welcome back to Instant Replay with Fred Rogan. Here we go. A chance for you to win instantly if you simply watch. And if you've got four lucky numbers tonight, you could win $1 million in our million dollar lucky number payoff. Now it is time to find out who answered our name the place web question. Remember the question? What borough is Yankee Stadium located in? The Bronx, Queens, or Brooklyn? We've got Chris on the phone. Chris, where are you calling from? Irvine, California. From Irvine, California. Chris, did you enjoy the game tonight? I loved it. Did you? Because you're a Yankee fan? I'm from New York. Well, then it's a good night for you. Let's see if it's oh, yeah. a better night. What was Pardon the answer? Me? What's the My, answer? The Bronx. Yes, the Bronx, of course, is correct. You are an internet winner. Now, our prize board has numbers from one to nine. Pick a number and pick a prize. Number three. What's behind number three for Chris? Congratulations to the winner of TiVo, which lets you pause live TV and automatically record your favorite shows every time they're on. With three months of free service, a retail value of $539. With TiVo, you run the show. All right, Chris, nice job. You've got the big team. Oh, Chris, you know what that sound means? Double or nothing. Absolutely right. You know how it works, right? We're going to uh, ask you another question if you want it. You get it right. You get another shot at the prize board. But if you miss it, you lose everything. And remember, the top winner goes for the million bucks. Right now, Reginald has the Wave Runner. It's almost $6,000. You've got the TiVo machine at $539. So if you want to have a shot to go back to the board and maybe the million bucks, you need to play. Good news, just two choices, so you have a 50-50 shot. Do you I want to play? First. <laughs> you want to play? Can I know the question first, like no. last night? No, we're not doing that anymore, Chris. Oh, but please. No, no, we can't give a hint like that. Can I know what it's related to? No, you can't know what it's related to, Chris. Uh, All right, Bob the Rules Guy. It's time to play, Fred. Let's go. Uh-oh, Chris. You heard Bob the Rules Guy. Do you want the question? I, can I know the question first? No, you can't know the question first, Chris. Okay, I'll go for it. Oh, you're going to go for it. All right, here's the question. What year, what year did the Yankees move to Yankee Stadium? Was it 1923 or 1927? See, Ruth played in 27. That was, I think that was the first year there. Um, Chris, we need an answer. 27. Was it 1927? Oh, Chris, I'm so sorry. I'm so very sorry, but thank you for playing tonight. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> oh, poor Chris. All right, well, that means we're going to now move to the million-dollar lucky number payoff. Are we ready to go? Are we ready to try for $1 million? Our top prize winner of the night is Reginald. Reginald, are you on the line? All right, we'll get Reginald on. And we also have an instant winner on the phone right now. Robert is our instant winner. Robert, where are you calling I'm, from, please? I'm calling from Los Angeles. From Los Angeles. All right, Robert, you hang tight. Now, in our studio tonight, we have 
a compliance official who is walking in at this very moment and is going to hand Eric the envelope containing tonight's million dollar lucky number. That number is known only to representatives of Lloyd's of London. Now this is the moment that we have been waiting for. We're going to start with Robert from Los Angeles. Robert, yes. please if you would give me a four digit number from zero 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 up to and including nine 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 nine. Twelve nineteen. Twelve nineteen. All right. We do not have Reginald on the line right now. Our top winner of the night from Compton, who won the Wave Runner, we would recommend that if Reginald wants a chance to win, he needs to get off his phone, or more importantly, call us right now, because we are waiting. Again, Robert from LA, his number 1219, and the longest drum roll in television history is going on right now. I'll open it up and pick Reginald's number. For no, don't open it up and pick <laughs> Reginald's number. Eric, we're still waiting for Reginald. All right, I'm sorry, Reginald could not come through. We're going to another instant player. It's Jay. Jay, where are you calling from? I'm calling from Castig. All right, Jay, we need a four-digit number from 0000 up to and including 9999. What is your number? Uh, 4657. 4657. To win the million dollars, you must match the number exactly and in order. Eric, open the envelope and tell us tonight's million dollar lucky number. It is? 0822. Oh, 0822. But Robert from Los Angeles, you're the closest, so you are going to win two fabulous prizes. Here they are. Yes. Congratulations. You and a guest will enjoy a three-night getaway at the Ritz-Carlton Laguna Niguel, California's premier luxury resort. Relax by our sparkling pool, play tennis, enjoy golf, or stroll along our magnificent beach. For reservations, call 1-800-241-3333. Retail value $1,200. Travel accommodations provided by Priceline.com, where you name your own price and save on airline tickets, hotel rooms, home mortgages, and more. Visit us on the internet at Priceline.com. All right, that's two airline tickets to anywhere in the continental United States and a fabulous resort vacation, all from Instant Replay. We could not get Reginald on the line tonight, Eric, so what we're going to do, since he was the big winner, he will come back tomorrow night and play for the million dollars as our instant winner. So, Reginald, you got another shot tomorrow. We'll have a clue about tomorrow's show, so stay tuned. Instant Replay is brought to you by TiVo. Now you can pause live TV and automatically record your favorite shows every time they're on. With TiVo, you run the show. Imagine living life on a grander scale. Imagine tasting water when it's brand new. Or being one with nature without going it alone. Introducing Ford Excursion. Discover the ultimate in capability from Ford Outfitters, offering you the most far-reaching sport utilities on earth. Ford Outfitters, no boundaries. I've played this moment out a thousand times in my head. I do the final minutes of the fourth quarter end zone dance. I grab the first person I saw and give him a big hug. Then I shout out to the world, I am the man. I am the man. And now that it's finally happening, I think I'm going to be sick. This is our art. We sculpt in metal, paint in G-forces. You won't find our work in museums, for we are artists of the streets. Our art places form in harmony with function, moves body and soul. Cars are our passion. Engineering is our art. Acura.
Welcome back to Instant Replay with Fred Rogan. All right, before Eric and I wrap it up tonight, let's check in with Colleen Williams for a preview of what the news is going to look like at 11 o'clock. Colleen. Thanks, Fred. Coming up tonight at 11, new developments in the investigation into that Learjet crash of uh, golfer Payne Stewart. There is a Southland connection to the tragedy. We'll tell you about that tonight at 11. Plus, some exciting news in the battle against the bulge. The dramatic results of a new treatment that fools the brain into burning fat. Don't we all want to hear about that? And new technology to protect local deputies from bullets. Put to the test today, you'll see exactly what happened tonight at 11, right after the movie. And Fred, I just wanted you to know, I would have picked 0822 you for could, Reginald. You could have represented My Reginald. My favorite numbers, how'd you, other than four. Well, there you go. All right, <laughs> Colleen, we will see you at 11 o'clock. Right. Thank you very much. Goodbye. All right, uh, so we came close tonight. We thought Reginald would be on the line, but uh, we'll call him tomorrow. Everybody better watch tomorrow because that's it for this show because <laughs> the games are over. The World Series is over tomorrow. So you're going to win tomorrow night. You're going to watch tomorrow night. Reginald, you're going to play for a million dollars tomorrow night. Don't forget, 5 o'clock, right here on Channel 4. Eric and I will be along right after with a post-game program. And if I were you, what would I do? Hmm. I think I'd keep an eye on who throws out the first pitch. That's a hint, okay? First pitch. I'll be watching. See you tomorrow. Bye. Promotional consideration provided by the Yamaha Wave Runner XL700 combines high performance and great styling. Yamaha produces America's favorite brand of personal watercraft, the Wave Runner. Only Wave Runners combine performance, handling, and styling. Nothing else is a Yamaha. Dine at world famous Peach Chili Dogs, a landmark since 1939. Located in Hollywood, see the star studded Wall of Fame and enjoy a bacon burrito dog, a monster 12 inch jalapeno dog, or chili cheese dog. Uh oh, another chocolate attack. Better reach for a Tootsie Roll or a chocolatey center Tootsie Roll Pop. Delicious. And as always, low in fat. Blast of butter microwave popcorn is so rich, so buttery tasting. You gotta get it. Blast of butter from Jolly Time.